Three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown & Wood, get an all-new 2022 Buick Encore GX. Save up to $1,250 off or 1.9% for 72 months. As always, Brown & Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. Pirate fans, get ready for a winning season and team up with Quality Equipment, your local John Deere dealer and proud sponsor of the ECU Pirates. When you do business with us, you'll get things done right. We're proud to offer a large selection of new and used John Deere equipment, a fully stocked parts department, and a highly trained staff who is here to support you throughout the life of your equipment. So get quality done right before every ECU game day and visit qualityequip.com. While you're sleeping, our whole hogs are slow cooking over wood to create that bite that Eastern North Carolina is known for. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have been the torch bearers for what whole hog barbecue is supposed to be. At Sam Jones, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. Everything, and I mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Come on over and see us at Sam Jones Barbecue, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. Sam Jones Barbecue, Fire Tower Road. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Avoid the long check-in lines and congestion at the big airports and fly local at PGV. Fast, convenient, and close to home, PGV has more American Airlines flights. Book today at aa.com. PGV, where the pirates fly. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Have you ever seen those exotic aquariums like the guys do in Las Vegas on television? You ever thought about having one of these aquariums in your business? It's more affordable than you think. This is Hal Pruitt with rentafishtank.com. We can make having an aquarium in your business turnkey with no work, cleaning, or hassles for you. Rentafishtank.com creates a relaxing atmosphere and keeps children occupied. Rentafishtank.com already services many dental, pediatric, and doctor offices, plus hospitals and senior living centers. Check us out at rentafishtank.com. What's the big deal, deal? Where can you get pizza, bread twists, specialty chicken, and more for just five ninety nine each? Is it at Domino's? He hands off hand tossed pizza and a marble cookie brownie. He's going, going, going! There's a lot of variety on the radio and at Domino's too, where you can mix and match two or more. Five ninety nine each at Domino's. Two item minimum: pan pizza, bone and wings, and bread bowls will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. Can you be quiet, please? Thank you. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Welcome to Pirate Radio Live. There's local politics, bud. I don't care about the weather. I can't control the weather. Don't want to talk about the weather. Do we not agree? Sustain effort and violence. It could be a total goat rodeo. Cool, neat story. Was that supposed to be funny? This is why nobody else can get on the sug boat. You know what? We couldn't get on the sug boat. It's a test. What's the point of kissing his ass if we can't get on the sug boat? It's a test. Y'all are haters and non-believers. Sug, sug. Now live from the Pirate Radio Studios in the heart of the Pirate Nation, here is your host, Clip Brock. All right, welcome in to this Thursday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Clip Brock here inside the Pirate Radio Studios, talking to you today on Pirate Radio 92.7 FM. In Greenville, 104.1 in Washington. We're on 1250, 930. You can find us online, pr927fm.com. And watch the show on Facebook Live and on YouTube. And we've got a special Free Beer Thursday YouTube giveaway going on today. What should we have the people say in the chat box? Hmm. We could do, like, Super Bowl winner. We could do... How about this? We're going to have a couple of former pirates on today. 
and we've talked to a lot here recently cj we got a by the way we have a best of show coming up friday with shirley rhodes and i yes uh we'll have interviews with cj wilson uh alec burleson connor norby from baseball uh today we've got akeem richmond former pirate great basketball uh sharpshooter so how about uh how about your all-time favorite pirate okay go, go to youtube pirate radio tv and our live feed just type in your all-time favorite pirate and when you share your all-time favorite pirate we'll have a a memory or two uh about that player and once you do that once you enter in that name you are entered into our contest because uh in the five o'clock hour we'll be giving you uh some free beer it's free beer thursday uh brought to you by bud light every day especially game day is bud light today we're giving away a 12 pack of bud light seltzer hard soda variety pack also a large two topping pizza from domino's and we've got this hoodie as well that we're going to throw in so an awesome uh, prize pack for you today here on pirate radio live the bud light seltzer hard soda pack you can pick it up at your favorite retailer today or you can win it right here on pirate radio live tyler harrison says chris johnson steve hill says shane carden all you have to do is join us now on youtube and uh, type in your favorite all-time pirate does Tom. it have to be a specific sport or could it be across any sport no it could be like me i went to east carolina you could say me you could say Brock uh anderson you could say dexter okay i was thinking athlete but yeah, uh, yeah th- that's what i'm saying uh, i i, I you assumed you meant wife. athlete I, I mean i assumed you meant athlete but was it specifically no, a, anything you know did no. it okay no is clip not no. an athlete shirley no wow. that is correct do we not agree mm-hmm. uh peanut butter hero chooses lincoln riley or pat die well that's two people john moody says zeke bigger Robert Hand says Musa Body Man. Man, I miss some Musa. Mm, he could block a shot like it was nobody's business. Join us on YouTube today. Type in your favorite all-time ECU athlete, and you will be entered uh, with a chance to win. Shirley, if you could uh, help me keep up with that, maybe. Um because the entries are coming in saber's edge pressure washing says my number one is burley since i got to play golf with him two weeks after covid killed baseball tyler m says zach slate oh was, there's a, a name big fan, big fan yeah. of zach slate he was a he was a cool dude too kevin cozart has david garrard so uh get your entries in now we'll discuss this later on with tony and troy d uh, but also, you will be entered in to our free beer Thursday giveaway. All right, Shirley Rhodes here, CJ Schaefer here, Chandler Honeycutt to my left. Chan Man, how you doing? What's up, Clipper? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, bad news for CJ. We've got a goal. Oh, no. Yeah. And well, I told you who the better team was. So. You said Liverpool's the better team, and Liverpool has just scored 1 0 now on Arsenal. Oh, by the way, you must be 21 or older to win our prize today. Just saying. You are correct. Um, Yeah, it would be uh, pretty cool if we were giving away beer to underage people, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cool if you did. (laughs) Uh, We're going to go 21 or older for this one. All right, let's get to the rundown. Oh, let's get to the guest on today's show. Coming up in about 20 minutes, we'll talk to Akeem Richmond. Um, Akeem got back on my radar because he was tweeting about East Carolina's win over Memphis on Saturday. He was at the game, and uh, so we'll talk to him about this year's team, his uh, career at East Carolina, his pro career, and what he's up to today. So looking forward to catching up with Akeem Richmond. Also, oh, we got Tony Dunn? Uh Uh-huh. Well, dang, that was fast. Um, oh, you know what? I probably jumped the gun on that, <laughs> didn't did I? a little bit. Oh, sorry. But you know what? We'll, we'll get them on now. Uh, at 4 o'clock, we'll go further back in time and talk to former basketball player for the Pirates, Reed Los, one of the first Pirate players I ever knew existed uh, because I was around seven, eight, nine years old during that time when he was playing at East Carolina. I remember the Mike Steele days, and uh, we'll talk some old-school ECU basketball 
and uh, get Reed's thoughts. He was commenting on the win on Saturday as well. So we'll talk to Reed Lowe's coming up at 4 o'clock. The big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau, joins us at about 425. And in the 5 o'clock hour, Troy D. and touchdown, Tony Collins. And we will do our drawing for our free beer winner on this Thursday. Once again, jump over to YouTube. Uh, subscribe to Pirate Radio TV. And also comment in the chat section your favorite all-time ecu pirate and uh you'll be entered into our contest all right i'll tell you what let's go ahead and get the tony done we're not gonna we got a best of coming up on friday so we're going to do some picks today on the show congratulations to jalen and cj who went a perfect six and oh wild card weekend we'll see if they can keep that going this week and we welcome on from carolinacatchronicles.com Tony Dunn. Tony, how you doing, man? Uh, not six and oh, not six and oh. <laughs> you're doing four and two good, so your head's above water. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, you know, the games that we thought were going to be the ones that were at least not coin flips, but the ones of interest to me, you know, um, that San Francisco 49ers game. We talked about that, how the spread was so close. And then that uh, Rams. Cardinals game, you know, just trying to figure out who the pretender and who the contender was, and I think they settled that pretty quickly, like in the first eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rams took it to them. Not a lot of great games Wild Card weekend, which I say that's a good thing, because it's going to set up some awesome games coming up this weekend, and I am excited for them, and we'll get to those momentarily. Real briefly, Tony, uh, let's talk about what's going on in Pantherland. Scotty Montgomery, a second interview with the Carolina Panthers. Also saw former Washington coach Jay Gruden interviewed. Uh, well, what's the latest on the offensive coordinator search uh, with the Panthers? Well, I tell you, desperate times call for desperate measures, Cliff. And I, uh, so, man, this, times are so dark, I even pulled out, I put the pen to paper again, got on the internet and started writing about Scotty Montgomery in his second interview, what that tells us about the attractiveness of the Carolina Panthers job. And I really think if you look at the candidates that right now that are being fielded out there when it comes to Ben McAdoo, Jay Gruden, Scotty Montgomery, um, they tell you a lot about what people think of the position uh, that they would have to fill and who that is attractive to. Uh, the right, latest news is uh, Pip Hamilton, uh, from who's the hot name around the NFL right now, uh, that he declined an interview with the Panthers. So, I mean... This is not a high-profile job. The best candidates, the candidates like we want, like a Jim Caldwell or something like that, these guys are sitting back laying and waiting to see if they're going to get head coaching jobs and are probably looking to come into a more stable situation than the Carolina Panthers have. Porous offensive line, question marks around the quarterback position, and really a head coach that's walking towards the, the executioner's table or whatever, the chopping block in a way. it's gonna. He's trying to drag his feet this season and maybe uh, weasel out of it, but right now things don't look good. And smoking Jay Gruden has uh, got his, his second interview today. Uh, I have had a an unpopular take, Tony. I think it's unpopular that I think, I think Jay Gruden and McAdoo would not be bad hires for the Panthers. I loved... I'm, I'm kind of... Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Is that, is that you know, you... Uh, a lot of these things is the most recent memories uh, that we have of these guys are because they were poor head coaches, not necessarily poor offensive coordinators. And then when things became so desperate and they took over play calling abilities, I think McAdoo ended up taking over at the end. Can't remember. But, you know, is that right then you just get that stink on you that's hard to, to forget about. The question is with Jay Gruden is today DJ Swearinger came out with a story where you know, it's like, is the character of these guys all that great? Yeah. So some kind of questions when it comes to Jay Gruden, the baggage that comes with, you know, his brother, the whole Washington fiasco, and the ch- all of that mess. Uh, ba- McAdoo, it's just a haircut, man, that slick back hair that makes us go, oh, God, this looks like these guys are meeting at a Denny's after a cheap night of drinking. He had a weird mustache thing going one time, too, so there is that with him. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. Is like, I mean, is that at the very minimum they should be higher sought after than like a Scotty Montgomery who is who's really never really showed as much of anything. And I'm hoping that I'm not holding too much 
against Scotty Montgomery just because of what happened at ECU. But he well, didn't have a ton of success in Maryland, and yeah, um, he's just living off that rep of hanging right now with Jonathan Taylor. Ellerby brought up a, a, a point on Scotty Montgomery's side. I think you kind of said it too with the dead man walking with rule. This is. Uh, I don't know. If you're trying to move up in the coaching world, this is a, a tough job to take because pretty soon the head coach is going to get fired and you're going to be dangling out there again without a net looking for another job. So, you know, you got to... you got a good job to go. You got to pick your spot uh, if you're one of these coaches out here looking for a gig. All right, uh, so there's that. Chandler has said all along you're kind of picking at the bottom of the barrel, right, Chandler? They're like, yeah. Hey, there's not a ton of attractive I mean, names out there when this search began it was supposed to be we're going to go find this rock star offensive rock star that's right and out of the list of candidates that we've seen since the searches began and the people that have left the list uh including pep hamilton who just declined that like tony mentioned um really not that much of rock stars the thing about scotty montgomery getting a second interview his first interview was from zoom so i think maybe that the connection was bad and they told him to come back they told him to come to uh, Charlotte. <laughs> Scotty is a great talker, man. He can uh, he can talk himself into a job. So let's see if he uh, is the apple of Tepper's eye. Say what? Let me ask you a question. Is going back to Scotty Montgomery's time at East Carolina? I know everything was a disaster from the AD to the whole. You know, basically yeah. only winning what nine nine and twenty six. But when it comes to the offensive attack and scheme, and was it? Were our problems, uh, like, complete on the offensive side, or was it a lot of, you know, our defense couldn't stop anybody? What are your just thoughts, if you could kind of remove Scotty Montgomery from the stink of his time at ECU and just think about him as a play caller? Huh. Well, well, we went through how many defensive coordinators while he was here. Yeah, it was all bad uh, and on the defensive side of the ball. Also, there were a lot of numbers put up, but a lot of garbage time stuff. A yeah. lot of the game is out of reach. So we saw whether it be Minshew, Nelson, um, Thomas Cirk for a couple Cirque games. Cirk a little bit, yeah. And then early Aylers would put up like massive numbers offensively, but it was kind of empty stats for the most part. So, I, yeah, I, it was bad, Tony. It, it was bad. I, I, I will say this, and this is a good thing. The players that played for Scotty Montgomery have come to bat for him, so you like to see that. Yeah, they still are. They yeah. still are. I saw somebody tweeting about it the other day, and then he took a reaming for saying, I'm glad a black man can feed his family, and everybody's like, I don't think those guys got problems eating, homie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and players, if the coach is, is actually a good dude, are always going to stick up for their guy. So, I mean, you understand that. All right, uh, let's get to the picks, Tony and crew. We'll go around the horn again. Bengals at Titans. King Henry back. I said to Chandler earlier today, it's kind of ridiculous that you can take the Titans right now and just put 15 bucks down, and if they win the Super Bowl, that turns into over $100. And I'm saying that it's crazy because they are the one seed, and they are completely almost forgotten about because of the uh, Chiefs and Bills on the other side. Uh, and they're only a three and a half point in this game over Cincinnati, who before last week hadn't won a playoff game since we were 10 years old, Tony. So, Bengals at Titans. I, uh, I'm i going Titans here. I, I like the disrespect. Nobody believes in this thing. And they're going to host an AFC championship game and say, hey, Kansas City slash Buffalo, come get some here at, uh, where are they at, Nissan Stadium? I'm taking Tennessee at home this week, Chandler. Uh, I'm on ride with you. I'm going to go Titans as well. The qu- the question is is can this Titan defense pin their ears back and get to Joe Burrow and not allow him to have time to find Jamar Chase because people joke about it, but it's kind of the truth. I mean, he can just throw the ball up and Jamar Chase is going to be out there somewhere and catch the football. But uh, I just saw here on Twitter the Titans were the only team in the NFL who had three players with eight plus sacks this season. That's including Harold Landry, Danico Autry, Je- Jeffrey Simmons, and that's not even mentioning uh, Bud Dupree, who came from the Steelers last year, who's a really good pass rusher as well. So, can that defense for the Titans get to Joe Burrow? I believe so. And the King <clears throat> is back, so uh, give me the Titans. All right, CJ. Uh, I'm going to take the Titans as well. I expected uh, the Bengals to have a better week than they did last week. Not that I was underwhelmed. I was 
I guess whelmed, but I <laughs> <laughs> they needed to, in my opinion, I needed to see a little bit more from them to have confidence in them knocking off the Titans. All right, Shirley, Bengals to Titans. Uh, looks like Derrick Henry's going to be back. Uh, I'm going to go with the Titans. All right, Tony, do you want to be on an island with the Bengals, or are you going with the Titans? I do want to be on an island, but I'm not going to take it. First, oh. I'd like to say that whelmed is one of my favorite words <laughs> as there is. That was good. Um, it, it really does capture so much. Underwhelmed, overwhelmed, I'm just whelmed. <laughs> I want to pick the Bengals. I'm excited about this team, but I feel like I, uh, over the last back end of the season, I started to sleep on the Titans. Uh, I think this, I think Cincinnati is going to have a lot of success in the future, but I think that maybe uh, this is a little bit too early, too soon for them. Yeah. I'm going to roll with Tennessee as the safe pick, but I do expect Cincinnati to have a chance in this game. Cincinnati's on that kind of Buffalo thing where, all right, they won a playoff game. But they're not. It's not their time yet. And now we're looking at the Bills as a Super Bowl contender. Maybe we're doing that with the Bengals a couple years from now if Burrow's healthy and they can keep rolling. All right, Forty ers at Packers. Um, I'm not. I'm taking Green Bay at home. I'm not going to overthink it. I. I'm taking the Packers. Chandler. Yeah, I'm going to take the Packers. I did like what I saw out of Elijah Mitchell last week against the Cowboys, the running back for uh, the 49ers. Uh, they gave him a lot of the load uh, in their win in the wild card game against Dallas. Uh, but Jimmy Garoppolo kind of didn't like what we saw there down the stretch from him. He was he allowed Dallas to get back into the game. Well, that's what I think Green Bay is going to score, and Garoppolo is going to have to throw at some point, and I don't like that. Well, first of all, he's not going to be able to make any kind of mistakes like that any in any part of the game. So, and I can see that happening. Give me Green Bay at home, CJ. I'm with you, Clip. Don't don't overthink it. Go on Green Bay. I've been consistent all year, other than the first week of the season. I can't I can't go away from them now, Shirley. I think it's just too it's too difficult to pass on an Aaron Rodgers that's playing some really really good football and Jimmy G who just is just too inconsistent to really make a guess here. So I'm going Green Bay at home. All right, Island Boy, another chance to get on an island here, Tony. Will you take it? No. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Give me Green Bay. I mean, I'm just uh, at the end of the day is like. Uh, uh, LaFleur and Rodgers aren't going to make the mistakes that McCarthy makes on the way to the stadium. That's a good point. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> is that, uh, look, is the 49ers, they've, they've been a respectable team. That defense now yeah. is no joke, and it's been slept on all year. It's going to be a good game. I don't expect it to be a high-flying game, but they have two of the best players in football on their team, and the 49ers are just playing as a team. Roger, Devontae Adams is the best receiver in the game. Sorry, I mean, hands down. I know people want to say it's Diggs, but it is Devontae Adams. This guy, he's a heady receiver that's got all the physical tools. I can't wait to see where he goes next year. Jimmy G is going to throw a pick somewhere in this game. I want to say it's going to be Razul Douglas, our guy, Tony, making that pick. What do you say? I love it, man. I love Razul Douglas. He was one of my favorite Panthers last year and a big mistake in letting him go and i'm glad to see he's having the best year of his career this year and one of the top rated corners of all football all right uh chandler's prop for the game jimmy g over half an interception uh rams at bucks easy i'm gonna keep riding with my rams but they look like a super bowl team the other night this is not very smart to pick against tom brady in the playoffs especially when he's at home I, I hope the Rams didn't show everything they had in that dominant win that they had uh, against the Cardinals, but I'm going to say the Rams keep it rolling, and I'm going to take Los Angeles to win on the road. I'm going to stick with my guys. Chandler. Uh, this is a whole different story when it comes to quarterbacks face this week. I mean, you're facing a guy, Matthew Stafford, who's having uh, one hell of a, uh, a year uh, after leaving Detroit, for, You know, being there his whole career. Uh, facing Jalen Hurts last week kind of didn't help. Uh, this defense is good for Tampa Bay, but uh, I I really want to root for the Rams for your future, Clip Brock. So I am. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Rams on the road wow. heading to the NFC Championship game. You realize we're taking Stafford over Brady, right? Well, this he's is, he's lost in the playoffs before. This is a, okay. All right, CJ. Not many times. Well, I'm right there with you. Um, I'm taking the Rams as well. I. 
wasn't high on the Cardinals all year. However, I was impressed with uh, the Rams' defense and their ability to get to Kyler pretty much every play. Um, I don't. I won't expect them to have the same kind of pass pass rush rate on Brady as they did last week, but I do expect them to make the better plays, and I expect them to win. I told Igo that Von Miller looks like he's say. 24 years old again, and luck. he said that he probably just got bored being uh, around such crappy players in Denver, <laughs> and now he's got a new lease on life and a potential second Super Bowl ring in his future, and he's playing at a very high level right now. Three tackles for loss and a sack last week for the veteran Von Miller. Uh, Shirley, Rams and Bucks. Uh, as much as I hate to admit it, it is hard to bet against Brady. I'm going to go Bucks. Man, Tony. Man, uh, you know, I fully came in here wanting to take the Rams, but, you know, like, you know, you guys are, like, beating me to the punch. I'm going to go Rams. I think that, look, is uh, the Bucks is that we're just going to – they always have a chance to win with Tom Brady, obviously. Um I think that they're a little banged up, too banged up right now. The uh, you know our our friend CW uh, who comes on and talks fantasy football with us here on the show. He's always at sports trivia. He is a Bucks fan. He said last night with a straight face. He says we lose by thirteen on Sunday. He said we're too depleted, uh, too beat up. And I said that's a crazy prediction. But to uh, what you just said to echo it, Tony, they have. Uh, they are depleted. They, who's the healthiest team in the playoffs? That's the team that's going to make a run. It is not Tampa Bay this year. Well, it might be Green Bay. It might be the Titans. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take the Rams. All right, and finally, Bills at Chiefs. I'm uh, hmm. I'm confidently taking the Chiefs. I love the way they're playing lately. Confidently taking the Chiefs. Chandler. Yeah, you're right, because I remember earlier this year is is the Chiefs sleepwalking to the playoffs, and once they do get to the playoffs, it's like they just turn on a different uh, switch, and that switch has been flipped. I'm going to go with Kansas City at home. I do like that there is a rematch from last year. Uh, I believe it was the AFC Championship, or yeah, the AFC Championship last year. I mentioned it earlier this week on the show. Stephon Diggs was seen sitting there watching the ceremony, watching – uh, the Chiefs received their their AFC Championship trophy. Uh, I think he's going to be doing it again this year. So uh, give me uh, give me the Chiefs. And we do this with all quarterbacks, but there was a time where we were like, you know, can Josh Allen win in the playoffs? He had a freak out moment early in his career in the playoffs. Um, well, he can do it. He did it last week. So I'm not taking anything away from the Bills. I just I like the Chiefs at home here, CJ. I'm taking the Bills with. Minimal confidence, but this is uh, probably the biggest toss-up game for me. I was very impressed with, well, the entire team last week against the Patriots. Um, I know these the, teams dominated yeah, in their, they did. In their that's, divisional round last week. That's what week. makes it so hard to pick is I know, I think the Patriots are obviously a better team than the Steelers, and the Bills just made it look easy against them. If not, if not for two punts in garbage time against the Jets two weeks ago, the Bills would have gone their last four games without punting. I don't think mm. there's a hotter team in football right now than the Bills, and I'm just going to ride that. Wow. All right, Shirley, uh, Bills and Chiefs. I, I just think that Kansas City's defense has, has played much better in the last few weeks, um, and Patrick Mahomes looks like the Patrick Mahomes that we have gotten accustomed to seeing. I'm going to go with Chiefs. All right, Tony, who you got? Give me the Buffalo Bills. Tony, Tony likes the Bills. Challenge the gunslinger coming back, going to put man, going to light him up. The Bills time. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if Allen has another monster game. This is a great quarterback matchup. Uh, we're Five gonna see. touchdowns last week against yeah. the Patriots. Yeah. All right, Tony. Thanks for joining us, man. Have a good weekend. Thanks, man. You guys be safe out there. All right, there is Tony, Tony. Dunn, CarolinaCatChronicles.com, making some football picks. We got some items for our rundown. We'll save them for later this hour because we need to take a timeout, come back and talk to Akeem Richmond. What a shot, Jeffrey! The greatest shooter in ECU basketball history. Has the 12th most threes in NCAA history. And I think when he left East Carolina, he was like third on the list. But now everybody is gunning threes, so he keeps getting bypassed. 
but he is up there. Do you remember when he participated in the three? I contest? do. Now that you mention that, uh, I can't remember where that was aired. Maybe ESPN, yeah. CBS Sports, somewhere around there. It was on national television somewhere. But I remember sitting down watching him participate in that. We'll talk uh, old ECU hoops and what's going on today with the Keem Richmond when we return after this. Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Buick GMC Truck. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in Eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms at one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new 2022 GMC Sierra 1500 and save up to $2,000 off. And as always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the convention center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. Domino's week-long carry-out deal means you can carry out three topping pizzas for $7.99 each every day. That's right, $7.99 each, and every day means any day. But just in case there's any confusion, we've set up a helpful website to confirm if today's a day you can carry out three topping pizzas for $7.99 each at Domino's. Just go to HowAboutToday.com to find out if Domino's week-long carry-out deal is valid today. Spoiler alert, it is. Carry out only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. Excludes extra large and specialty pizzas. Crust availability varies by size. North Carolina State Parks is proud to announce that they have partnered with the Hometown Strong Program. Our visitor centers are now equipped with public Wi-Fi to help kids with school. Remote learning has become a critical public health measure in maintaining social distance and continuing to educate our young people. Take advantage of Wi-Fi and a hike at Goose Creek State Park or a day trip to the beach and access remote learning at Fort Macon State Park. For more information, visit hometownstrong.nc.gov. In studio with Dr. Shondell Jones from Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness. What's new, Dr. Jones? Yes, we just added 6,000 more square feet of gym space where we're now able to offer our athletic movement programs. They're age-specific programs that help you develop speed, power, agility, and strength to give you that athletic edge. So come by and see us at Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness on Arlington Boulevard or check us out online at kptonline.com. That's kptonline.com. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. The Rick House, Eastern North Carolina's premier American-style restaurant and bourbon bar, has great specials throughout the week, like $10 Tuesdays. Get eight traditional wings and a draft beer for just $10. Wednesday night is date night. Two salads, an appetizer, a bottle of wine, two entrees, and a dessert for just $55. Friday is Smokehouse Night with the best ribs and brisket around. Saturday is Italian Night featuring all of our made-from-scratch pastas along with two glasses of wine. And on Sunday is the legendary brunch from 10 to 2. The Rick House, 7 10 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. If you wake up in the morning with a backache, feeling more tired than you did when you went to bed, you probably need a new mattress. And the best place to get that mattress is Factory Mattress. Hi, I'm Kirk Smith, General Manager. For more than 40 years, Factory Mattress has been Greenville and Wilson's local mattress dealer. We guarantee the lowest price on the area's best selection with over 50 models to choose from. No seconds or overruns. Factory Mattress offers only first quality direct from the manufacturer. Sealy Posture Pedic, Beauty Rest, Stearns and Falls and Tempur-Pedic, the most highly trained sales associates with over 60 years of combined experience. Same as cash financing with zero interest, up to 48 months, and free local delivery. Face it, to have a good day, you've got to have a good night. So sleep better knowing you saved money at Factory Mattress, locally owned on Greenville Boulevard in Greenville, on Forest Hills Road in Wilson, on the web at FactoryMattressUSA.com, and a proud member of Pirates Supporting Pirates. This is ECU assistant football coach Roy Tesh, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening 
listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by University PC Care, your local tech support experts for all your personal and business needs. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's for the best Mexican food and fun in Greenville. Come and enjoy favors like shrimp tacos, steak and chicken fajitas, burritos, enchiladas, ACP, and more. Follow Chico's on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's for dine-in or to go. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here is Clip Rock. Alrighty, welcome back into the show. It is Free Beer Thursday here on Pirate Radio Live. We're doing a YouTube giveaway today. Subscribe to Pirate Radio TV on YouTube. Head over to our live video feed. Comment in the chat box with your favorite all-time pirate, and you will be entered into our contest. Redbeard says... None of you people have said Dwayne Harris but me. All of you are banned from the Sugboat and the Pirate Radio Contest. Well, Sug, Sug. Redbeard does not make the rules, but he makes a good point. Actually, okay, yeah, he makes a good point. He uh, he is the only one that said 17 so far. Uh, we'll uh, discuss your entries and uh, have our drawing coming up in the five o'clock hour with touchdown tony collins and troy d got a former pirate joining us at four o'clock reed Lose, as we'll talk some old school ecu basketball and more and uh, we'll talk to a former pirate right now akeem richmond as he joins us on the pirate radio live line akeem was at the game on saturday and uh, we'll talk about that and a lot of his playing days here at ecu akeem uh, welcome back to pirate radio how you been doing man I've been fantastic. How about yourself? Hey, doing great. And I uh, wanted to get you on, Akeem, because I saw you were at the game on Saturday when East Carolina had that thrilling come from behind victory against Memphis. And uh, Brandon Suggs hits the buzzer beater for the Pirates, and you were there to witness it, Akeem. And we think about you and all the threes you made. We also, of course, think about the buzzer beater to win the CIT championship. Uh, Brandon, after the game, told Jeff Charles that's the first buzzer beater he's ever hit in a real basketball game. How about you, Akeem? We know about the big one to win the CIT. Uh, how many in your career playing basketball did you have, buzzer beaters? Uh, I probably had about five, but that was one of the biggest ones that I've ever had, you know, uh, I believe that was my first college buzzer beater, but the rest of them I had like three in high school, I believe. Were they all three pointers that came, or were any of them inside the arc? Nah, you know all I take is three. (laughs) (laughs) I figured I'd ask anyway, but yeah, I figured I knew the answer to that. (laughs) Akeem, uh, what was it like? uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I said uh, I had a fantastic time at the game. Like the environment was very electric. You know, it made me miss putting on that ECU uniform, you know. No doubt. And as a player, and you got to witness it as a fan the other day, Akeem, can you speak to to what that means for the guys on the court when there is that energy in the building as opposed to playing in front of a crowd of like 1,000, you know what I mean? Right. When you play in the front of a dead crowd, it's sort of like not an advantage. But when you come to Mendes, you know that ECU has the upper hand due to the six men in the crowd and you know it's going to be electric especially when you're playing a big time program like memphis you know i've always enjoyed playing in front of huge crowds it actually makes me play a whole lot better and i feel really really good about that like as far as for those guys due to covid because they was playing in an empty mentions and i literally cannot even imagine playing in front of them you know, an empty crowd like that. <laughs> Pirates beat a top 10 team last year, Akeem Houston, and nobody was there to witness it. So, I mean, credit to the players for... Imagine that. Yeah, it's it's crazy to even think about. Yeah. Akeem Richmond joining us. Uh, Akeem, you, you saw a fantastic comeback Saturday and then turn around Tuesday night. East Carolina's up by 20, and they lose the UCF. And, and I was in the building for both of them. And when a team goes on a run, it's a, it's a crazy thing, that momentum that a team can get. And I'm sure you've been a part of it where you've had comebacks. I'm sure you've been on teams that have blown leads before, too. I mean, how, how do you – momentum is kind of a myth, but it's a, it's a real thing, right? I mean, you feel it when you're on the court. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, basketball is a game of runs. You know, you could go 
five minutes where you're hitting everything or you could go five minutes where you can't make anything. But uh, you just have to stay even killed and just fight into the end, whether you're up 20 or down 20. And that's what uh, UCF did. They continued to fight, and, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. But to the ECU fans, I wouldn't dwell on it. Just try to move on and focus on the next ball game. Talking to Akeem Richmond, who uh, came to East Carolina from Rhode Island. He's a North Carolina native, so I'm sure that had something to do with you coming to East Carolina after uh, you spent some time in Rhode Island, Akeem. But did you have any other options, or, or I'm sure you did, did you have any other uh, reservations about going to another school when you left Rhode Island, and, and how did it end up being East Carolina? Yes, I had about four other schools, uh, College of Charleston, uh, University of Georgia, University of South Florida, and NC State was looking at me as well. And East Carolina was the first school that I visited out of those four schools. And once I got to ECU and I seen the environment, the facilities, and different things like that, I was like, this is the place for me. It just felt right, you know. I didn't even have to think about it. And I signed right there on the spot. I didn't even take my other visits to University of Georgia or any of those other universities. Akeem Richmond joining us on the Pirate Radio Live Line right now. Uh, Akeem, let's see, 6, 8, 10, 12th all time in three point uh, field goals made. And a lot of, you know, a lot of guys that are above you now have passed you since you played because the three pointer has become more and more prevalent. And uh, I'm sure you wish you could get a few more games and get your uh, your numbers back up, right? I know, man. I'll <laughs> about two or three more games. I'll be right back in the top three. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Akeem Richmond joining us. Akeem, let's talk about your post-East Carolina career. Uh, played some professional ball. So um, tell us a little bit about that, what you did uh, playing basketball after uh, you left East Carolina. Okay, so I had three NBA workouts, uh, one with the Houston Rockets, one with the Boston Celtics, and one with the Orlando Magic. And I did my best workout with the Houston Rockets and they ended up signing me to a training camp deal in which I stayed for about mm, a week and a half in which I was in practice with guys like James Harden, uh, Jason Terry, Dwight Howard, and I learned a lot from those guys, but they sent me down to the NBA G League, which I had a pretty oh, okay season. You know, I averaged about 11 points per game. And then my second year, I played for the Sacramento Kings NBA G League team in which we won the Western Conference Championship in which I played with uh, John Stockton's son, David Stockton, yeah. who's a pass-first point guard. So I was enjoying that, of course. <laughs> a shooter's got to have a good point guard, right? Miguel Paul uh, was dribbling in and, and kicking it out to you, and I'm sure uh, David Stockton was doing the same at that level. Absolutely. You know, uh, like you said, a shooter always has to have that pass-first point guard. So I love playing with guys like that. So, Akeem, are you uh, in the real world now, or are you still doing something basketball-related? What are you up to these days? Yeah, I'm still around the game. Uh, I have my own shooting company in which I started, in which I travel throughout the state of North Carolina, and I'm teaching athletes the uh, art of shooting the basketball because that seems like a lost art. You know, guys want to work on dribbling and trying to do 360 dunks, and this new generation, they call it the jelly roll layup. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm just trying to teach athletes the importance of shooting the basketball. And I tell my clients all the time, if you can shoot the basketball, there's minutes for you on the basketball court. You know, whether it's on the middle school level, or the high school level, or even college. If you can shoot, you're going to play. And uh, you didn't make all those threes by accident, Akeem. Your form, uh, your shooting stroke is is totally pure. Uh, you know, what, at what age did you did you know that that you had it? That you had that outside shot? I'm sure you uh, you shot countless shots. You know, on a on a goal outside or whatever. But at what age did you know that man? I'm I'm pretty good at shooting from distance. Right. Well, to be honest, I just got better and better um, the more I practiced and. I was an okay shooter in high school, maybe around 34%. But at ECU, I just, I was on like a Kobe mentality. That's what my mindset was. So before the games, I would shoot at least 400 shots. Uh, Before practice, I would shoot up 400 shots. After practice, I would shoot 
400 shots. And it just became, like, so natural to me. Like, I didn't even have to think about it. It was like riding a bike, you know, because shooting basketball is all muscle memory, you know, and confidence, of course. So that's that's really what helped me become a pure shooter at ECU. Akeem Richmond joining us. Akeem, uh, I, I want to ask you if, you if you keep up with your old teammates, but I know uh, you at least keep up with your old coach because I saw on social media uh, you went to a North Carolina game and uh, and, and Jeff Lebo took you in the locker room, right? So you still keep up uh, with your old coach there. Yeah, I keep up with all those guys, all my old teammates. Uh, I went up to the Dean Dong at UNC and Coach Lebo showed me around, you know, around the locker rooms. And I grew up uh, being a UNC ball boy, so I already seen the locker room. <laughs> so it just brought back memories, and me and him was able to catch up. And I ate, I actually went to Ohio State where Coach Nettie is. Yeah. He coached me my senior year. And he showed me around, uh, showed me all of the facilities and different things like that. So, yeah, it's still uh, a family-like vibe between me and the ECU guys, even the teammates, even the trainer, Nate. He's still on the uh, yeah. training staff. Yep. Yeah. You get to see some old familiar faces, I'm sure, when you come back around. Akeem Richmond joining us. Uh, Akeem, uh, speaking of the Dean Dome, uh, you know, it was fun in Minji's playing conference games, but how about the, the trip to Raleigh, uh, Chapel Hill, Cameron Indoor? You, uh, you had some pretty good games against those teams. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, as a small child growing up in North Carolina, you grow up being a Duke fan, NC State, or Carolina fan or whatever. You grow up wanting to play in the ACC. You know, so I had a chip on my shoulder going into those big time arenas playing against those big time programs. So I always want to do well against those programs. And, you know, I'm just so blessed to be able to have highlights that I can show my kids of me doing well against, you know, University of North Carolina and NC State and all of those schools. Talking to Akeem Richmond today on the Pirate Radio Live line. Uh, nice win last night uh, by the Charlotte Hornets on the road at Boston. I'm a Hornets fan, Akeem. They got some good shooters on that roster. But when you look across the NBA, who are your favorite uh, pure shooters, guys that, that can light it up from three? Who do you like to watch? Well, of course, I enjoyed watching Clay Thompson come back last night. Yeah. Uh, I like Dame Lillard, Steph Curry, of course. Uh I really love Zach Levine because he can do it all. You know, he can shoot, he can dunk, he can pass. There's nothing that he can't do. So, well, pretty much my favorite. When you see these guys, and this is is nothing new, and and Ke- I guess Kevin Garnett hit a few threes, but I feel like he kind of started the trend of, of big guys that could dribble, that could shoot, uh, you know, mid range and from the outside. But now you see like Luca and. Uh, guys like Jokic and those guys. I mean, is it crazy to see how basketball's changed just since you started playing basketball with these big men who camp out outside now and, and shoot threes? Yeah, man, it's totally different. It's changed right before my eyes because back in the day, if you see a center shooting threes, it's like, what? What are you doing? It's probably getting taken out of the game, right? <laughs> Coach will cut them out and sit them on the bench. <laughs> To be honest, these centers are shooting better than the shooting guards. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's funny to see. It's a, it's a, it's a different game uh, for sure. It's getting further and further away from the basket, which is right up uh, Akeem Richmond's alley. Akeem, uh, so you got to see uh, the Pirates up close and personal the other night. Um, what, what did you think uh, when you saw that roster? What do you think about this group of Pirates? Who, who kind of stood out to you on the court? Uh, to be honest, all of them stood out. I've been to a few practices. I went to like three or four practices, and I love the way those guys compete. You know, they are resilient. doesn't matter if they're up five or down five. They fight hard until the end of the game, and that's one thing that really stood out to me. Uh, I really, the kid that I like, I'm trying to think of his name, Vance Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, he's a dog. I like him. And, of course, I like J.J. His game is pretty, pretty tight. Been missing him the last couple of games. Hopefully we can get J.J. back soon uh, because he is uh, a senior leader and also uh, can shoot it from the outside. Akeem, I, I know I, I'm pretty sure I've brought this up with you before. I talk about it with all the former players. It's great to see you in Minji's, you going to practices, uh, being around because I feel like there has been a bit of a void 
of East Carolina basketball becoming a program where former players are welcome back and, and around. So I, I hope to see more and more of that, man. And I'm glad that, that you're able to get back and watch games and, and be a part of this thing still. Yeah, for sure. ECU changed my life, so I'm a pirate for life. And I just enjoy being in that atmosphere and environment the other day. Thank you to Coach Dooley and the coaching staff. They treated me with, you know, open arms and left me tickets right, you know, next to the bench and all of that good stuff. So That's great. I really enjoyed my time there. Yeah, and hopefully uh, you can do it again. Akeem, it's great to catch up with you, man. Always appreciate you joining us here throughout the years on Pirate Radio, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best, and uh, we'll do it again down the road, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate the love. Thank you for having me. Akeem Richmond joining us today on Pirate Radio Live. We could use him in the roster, uh, on the roster coming up against Houston this weekend. Be nice to just have him camp outside and hit five, six threes. Yeah. I remember him going on the road to, uh, some tough road matchups against NC State where he lit it up. And then also, um, I think we went to Duke one time. And then also we went to the Dean Dome and played Carolina. And he loved playing in those ACC, uh, those ACC arenas. I still remember, um, at the state game, my stepson and I went with a state buddy of mine, and Akeem had hit two or three, and ECU was on a run, and they were coming down for a fast break, and a guard threw it out on the wing to Akeem, and he shot it, and I stood up and said, you know it, and he missed it, and like all the state fans around me were ragging me. Oh, I bet. God, it would have been a great moment. I would have, but isn't that the best feeling? Whenever <laughs> they put a shot up, and before it goes in, you go, "There it is!" Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, a lot of dang. them, a lot of them fell that day, but the one I really needed to didn't. So <laughs> I was mocked and made fun of. Uh, wasn't the first or the last time. All right, let's get a break in. We'll come back. We'll wrap up hour number one of Pirate Radio Live. It is Free Beer Thursday day. Courtesy of Bud Light. Every day, especially game day, is better with a nice cold Bud Light. Today, we're giving away a 12-pack of the Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda Variety Pack. Also, Larsu Topping Pizza to Domino's and the Pirate Radio Hoodie mm. can be yours. Must be 21 or older to win. How do you win? Well, you go to YouTube, you subscribe to Pirate Radio TV, and in the chat box, you put in your all-time favorite pirate, Max. I don't know if he's being genuine or trying to get brownie points or what. His favorite pirate is Akeem Richmond. Robert says Blue Edwards. Scott says Keith LeClaire. So all the names are coming in. You can chime in and get your opportunity opportunity to win this hoodie and the 12-pack of Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda. Go to YouTube now, find our live feed, and chime in there. We'll be back with more after this. Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of pirates and ENC. Open seven days a week from noon until 2 a.m., the Buck features live music every night of the week. Tuesday is karaoke with DJ Captain Morgan. Wednesday is acoustic night. Thursday is the DJ dance party. And Friday and Saturday nights, it's live bands. Check out the Buck's Facebook or Instagram page for more information. The Buccaneer Music Hall. We'll see you at the Buck. In sports, if you think joy only happens after you win, Think again. Look at the world's most successful athletes like Serena Williams, Brooks Kepka, and Alex Morgan. They don't spend all their days grinding away. They take time to enjoy themselves, like getting together with friends over a Michelob Ultra, because they know that happiness is the key to winning, and that joy is the whole game, not just the end game. Michelob Ultra, 95 calories, 2.6 grams of carbs. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. AB Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Papa John's just took their fresh, never-frozen dough and hand-stretched it New York style. So you can fold it or not. I ain't gonna lie, though. I fold it. Get a New York style pizza from Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans. The new Papa John's New York style pizza is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. You know texting while driving is dangerous. That's not new information. Yet most people admit to doing it anyway. Drivers are 23 times more likely to be involved in a car accident while texting. Know the facts and wait to text. The danger is real and it applies to you. 
Auto Owners Insurance. The no problem people. Information provided by Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. This is Norm Bryant with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates. Hey, dads, it's back. Plan to join us for our sixth annual Daddy-Daughter Dance Friday, February 11th at Rock Springs. This event will be a fun night of games, music, photo keepsakes, raffle tickets, and, of course, dancing. Best of all, 100% of the proceeds will go to Daughters for Dads, which supports local families affected by cancer. Sponsorship opportunities are also available. Purchase your tickets today by going to eventbrite.com and search for Daughters for Dads. We will see you Friday, February February 11th at Rock Springs. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and welcome inside the booth, the transfer portal, the transfer portal. I'll have some thoughts next. The Pirate Radio Podcast. Chancellor Philip Rogers. This concept of diversifying our enrollment portfolio is real. I think the traditional days of relying on large freshman classes are over uh, for every institution of higher education in America, maybe with the exception of your Ivies and uh, some of your major public flagships that are that are those big name brand institutions. You know, there's 4,000 colleges and universities in, in the higher education market. A large percentage of those are going to have to start thinking about enrollment more like a puzzle as opposed to a, a straight line. Listen to every Pirate Radio podcast now by visiting our podcast channel and subscribing in Apple iTunes or SoundCloud. Sometimes the pendulum swings too far the other way. I'm all for college athletes having freedom of movement. For too long, players had no place to go. Yes, they could transfer and sit out a year, but that was a tough deal. Now college athletics is just like pro sports. It's a free agent system. You will see guys playing for as many as four schools before their eligibility expires. All bets are off moving forward. I don't know how coaches are going to manage their rosters. A lot of staffs now have a coach whose sole responsibility is to manage the transfer portal. There's a joke people needle each other about when they say, hey, have you entered the transfer portal? Well, it's no joke in the crazy world of college athletics. It's reality. The horse is out of the barn, and he ain't coming back. Come on back again next time, and we'll visit inside the booth. Hey, everybody, this is David Glenn, and you're listening to my favorite station in eastern North Carolina, Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 1 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by University PC Care, your local tech support experts for all your personal and business needs. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. University PC Care has been Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. They are the local tech support experts for any of your business needs. Let University PC Care take care of it so you can take care of business. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip. All right, wrapping up Hour 1, a couple of uh, stories real quick. And uh, surely at some point we'll hit the audio as uh, Troy D. was able to catch up with Joe Dooley earlier today. Looks like Brandon Suggs will be a no-go Yep. Uh, for the Pirates coming up against Houston. But uh, we can play that later on. So there's a bit of news for you as they head out of town to take on Houston. Also, um, we got a new we got a new commit update and a new coach update regarding baseball. The commit update is a player from Georgia, a wide receiver, Jalen Johnson, uh, has committed to East Carolina out of the transfer portal. Uh, one of Johnson's quotes from Stephen Igo's report on Hoist the Colors said quote the program they've got a great coaching staff i like their offense the way they run and throw the ball end quote so jalen johnson gonna join uh the team as a champion won't be the first we had uh worth gregory right? i was going to mention that that uh the last time i think a national championship uh national champion came in here for the pirates was punter worth gregory coming off of a national championship with alabama now nigel not came here from Bama. God, but he never saw the field. He never saw anything. I don't know if he ever came to Greenville. But, uh, yeah, so just it, it could work out. It could not, but uh, hoping uh, Jalen Johnson can make Who an impact for the Who did you say the, the last person you said you weren't sure if they came to Greenville? Nigel Knott. Well, Nigel, Nigel Knott was here, but... But he was injured they never, a good yeah. a good portion of the time that he was here. I, I never played, so... Yeah, we don't, yeah. And then didn't he commit to Ole Miss? Yeah, he committed to, like, 12 schools. And play. Oh, I remember I was making fun of that. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Um, he was everywhere, man. Everywhere. Uh, Heath Blackman has been named the director of baseball of player development at East Carolina uh, for baseball. Uh, that announcement was made today by Cliff Godwin. And also, uh, some news on Skipper. Skipper. Skip Holtz is the new head coach. What college? Of the Birmingham Stallions. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to turn and turn some more. And when we're done turning, we're going to turn again. And then after we've turned two or three more turns, we're going to turn them all into turns. <laughs> Thank you, Brian that Meador. Is a good Skip Holtz <laughs> by is. Brian Meador. A fantastic Skip Holtz impersonation. It, Shirley, pop quiz. What league do the Birmingham Stallions play in? The USFL. Ding, 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 ding. Well done, Shirley Rhodes. Um, does this does he fall in the category of failing up? Since, because since leaving East Carolina, he has he was fired by South Florida. Florida. Uh, he was basically told to leave from Louisiana Tech, and now he's in the pros. Well, for, he's in the, He's in the USFL, but that's still pro ball. And he didn't. I wouldn't call what he did now at at South Florida. Yeah, I would not call what he did at Louisiana Tech failing. Uh, especially that run they had in bowl games. 2014 yeah. through 2019, they won the bowl game every year at the end of the year. Lost in 2020. And he had, let's see, 64 and 50 overall at Louisiana Tech. His record at East Carolina, by the way, was 38 and 27. Had a losing record with South Florida. So I, I hear what you're saying. I don't, I didn't mean, I don't look at, I don't think the USFL head coaching job is better than a college coaching job. So I don't think he went up. First no, of all, I just I it was more of a joke, but um ha 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 ha. I'm so glad you found it funny. But I mean USFL that that counts as what like semi pro. Yeah, I mean it's professional football. Yeah. So, but yeah, he had a really good run as uh Louisiana Tech's head coach and uh was not a stranger to bowl games and how many did he win out of those bowl games do you know or i just know he went on a streak of getting there yeah i just said it oh i thought you had mentioned he just went there i didn't know he had won the bowl games no i mentioned them both you were you were crafting your great joke yeah in your mind and miss me saying how why can i not multitask in my mind <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Just can't do it. Uh, so, congratulations to Skip. I, I'm Skip interested Burr. to see how many uh, Pirates end up in the USFL. Because we got a lot of guys that are leaving for professional football. All of them aren't going to land in the NFL. No. Nah. So, uh, I think we'll see a few. That'll be... If they win a championship, I hope he lets the fans on the field. <laughs> and uh, says that this is a special situation there in uh, in Birmingham. All right, let's take a timeout. We'll come back when we return. We'll talk some pirate hoops with Reed Los. If you're an old school pirate, you remember that name from the late 80s. We'll talk about his playing days at East Carolina, what he's up to today, and his thoughts on the current team and what Joe Dooley's doing here at ECU. That's on the way on Pirate Radio Live. We're back with you after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom with Team Coop Strong. We want to invite you to the Coop Strong race on March 19th. This unique race has a four-mile course, a ruck division, and an awesome after party. Proceeds support the local nonprofit Coop Strong, which provides financial support for those fighting ALS, scholarships in memory of Dr. Nelson Cooper, and funding for ALS research. You can sign up at RunTheEast.com and follow Coop Strong on Facebook for all of the details. As always, we appreciate your support, and go Pirates! Hey, Pirate Nation, Lindsey Gray here with Carolina Caliber. In 1960, my granddaddy started his firearm business right here in Eastern NC. Still family-owned and operated, we have the area's largest selection for outdoor shooting sports and accessories and are one of the nation's top firearm dealers. At Carolina Caliber, we have everything you need from hunting, home defense, and personal protection, including a wide variety for ladies and youth. We buy, sell, and trade. It's a time-honored tradition. Visit us at Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville. 
I can't think of anyone who doesn't love a clean car, but how often do you actually go to the car wash? Does it take too long, or maybe it's just not a very nice place? Tommy's Express changes everything. Our wash is bright, inviting, clean, and fast. I love the flat conveyor belt. So easy to pull onto, much smoother ride, and safer for my car. And when you join Tommy Club, you can wash as often as you like for one low monthly price. I save money and time. We're Tommy's Express. At the corner of Greenville Boulevard and Red Banks Road, Greenville. This is Steven Igo. You've heard from me plenty on Pirate Radio Live and perhaps have read some of my work on hoistthecolors.net. Now, get an extension of our in-depth coverage on the Hoist the Colors podcast. From game previews to immediate post-game analysis to emergency podcasts for breaking news, we've got you covered. A cast of guest co-hosts from fans, former coaches, and other writers join me for two podcasts weekly to break down all things ECU athletics. Subscribe to Hoist the Colors now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Chico's Mexican Restaurant is where the fiesta never ends. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Wednesday for shrimp tacos for only $9.99. Plus, Wednesdays means all Mexican imports for only $2.75. Thursdays, enjoy your favorite beef, chicken, or vegetable fajitas for only $9.99. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's in downtown Greenville and now available through DoorDash, featuring a half gallon of the famous margarita mix to go for only $9.99. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. For the latest from the world of golf, tune in every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 for the Golf Shop Radio Show. Hosts Mark Greenhelms and Matt Blanchard talk golf from tee to green and everything in between. If you like golf, you're going to love Golf Shop Radio. Before you tee up, drop on in. Welcome to the Golf Shop. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have kept the fires burning for Eastern North Carolina Whole Hog Barbecue. At Sam Jones, you'll find our smokehouse pumping out wood-fired meats cooked fresh every single day. There are no freezers at our place. Everything, and we mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Stop in and see us, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. At Sam Jones Barbecue, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. Hey Pirate Nation, this is Matt Driscoll. Please join us at A.J. Fletcher Music Hall or live stream on February 17th at 7.30 p.m. When Durward Ensemble will be on the campus of East Carolina University presenting works from our upcoming album, Prophetic Revolutions, and a world premiere by ECU alumna in Miss America 2019, Nia Franklin. If you would like to learn more or support our group, go to our website, durwardmusic.com. We look forward to seeing you Thursday, February 17th. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, W224EI Greenville, WDLX Washington, and W281CH Washington. Listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by University PC Care, your local tech support experts for all your personal and business needs. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. UBE has been an ECU tradition for over 50 years. Shop online anytime at piratewear.com. UBE has the biggest and best selection of ECU sportswear and accessories for pirates of all ages. Every day is game day at UBE. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Brock. All righty. Thank you, Shirley Rhodes. Welcome back into the program. Clip Brock here. We'll look at tonight's college basketball slate. Also, uh, NFL division around playoffs with Jeff Nadeau, the big man on campus. He'll join us later on this hour. Then in hour three, ECU Hall of Famer touchdown Tony Collins will join Troy D and I here inside the Pirate Radio studios. We always like to catch up with former Pirates and a little bit of a where are they now. Talk some old ECU athletics. We talked to Akeem Richmond earlier in the show. We'll talk to another former East Carolina basketball Pirate. Reed Lose joins us on the Pirate Radio live line. And uh, I saw Reed commenting on ECU's victory over Memphis on Saturday and thought, well, it'd be cool to, to catch up with the former Pirate basketball player. And Reed, I uh, appreciate your time on Pirate Radio here today. How you doing? 
No, absolutely. I, I appreciate you uh, having one of the old guys in. Yes, sir. It's uh, it's awesome to connect with you guys and talk some ECU athletics. And uh, Reed, I guess we'll start with what you're doing today. Uh, catch everybody up uh, on what Reed Lowe's is up to these days. Yeah, sure. Well, um, we've been in Charlotte um, for a long time, about 1994. Um, I'm in the pharmaceutical industry. I've been in it for about 26 years and, um, I've got, we've got two kids. I've got a freshman boy at NC state Wow! and my daughter's about ready to graduate, uh, in May from, uh, UNCW. How about that? Reed, uh, when's the last time you, uh, picked up a basketball? <laughs> uh, years. I, <laughs> my, my son played a little bit, so I used to go out there and, um, rebound but but rebound only um, <laughs> no more no more playing anymore uh how about this reed if uh if i gave you 10 free throws today in Minji's, how many could you hit seven could you hit eight I'm, I think I'd be pretty good for at least seven. Yeah, so. there you go. Reed Lowe's joining us on the Pirate Radio Live Line. Reed, once again, I I contacted you because I saw you comment on the win on Saturday, keeping up with, with Joe Dooley and what the Pirates are doing. It was a, a fantastic victory coming back from 19 points down to Memphis. So how much do you, you keep up with East Carolina and, and East Carolina athletics these days? Yeah, I mean, I've been a little bit more involved this year. Um, one of my... Uh, former teammates Jeff Kelly, his son's on the team. Yeah. And then, and Jeff and I were able to um, connect down in the Myrtle Beach tournament with uh, Robin House joined us down there to catch a couple games. And so I, I don't see them as much. I follow them. Um, you know, I, I see the scores and I try to catch up a little bit with them. But um, the other night was just one of those nights where, you know, it's just special. You know, it looked like the place was packed. And they were able to pull out a win. And, and, you know, I think I was commenting just on the fact that, you know, hopefully wins like that, you want to try to build on them and, and stay together as, as best you can as, as a team. And, you know, um, you sort of just sort of build on it and, and try to get the next one. And, unfortunately, they didn't do that the other night. And, um, you know, but uh, but they, they are they are really good. And, and Joe is, is really good, too. So, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do for the remainder of the year, and then and then moving forward. Reed Lowe's joining us. Reed played here in the late '80s, and a lot has changed uh, since then. Reed, you were playing some great rivalry games with CAA opponents back then. And uh, what do you remember about those games in Minji's? Uh, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of tight games against a lot of teams from around this area. How much fun was that uh, playing in those games in a in a hot Minji's Coliseum back then? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when Minji's, you know, it probably held maybe 6,500 back then. And, you know, when that place was packed and it would be packed, because when I was a freshman, those were the, those were the years where David Robinson and the Navy team oh, yeah. was a senior. So, and so those games will be always be packed. And the, and Wilmington was a huge rivalry for us there um, when we were playing. And um, so when that place get was packed and obviously blew, brought a lot of people in as much success as he was having, um, going through college. And, um, once that place got packed, it was rocking and, and, and the kids feed off it. There's no doubt. And everybody's involved. And, um, there's no question that that crowd uh, played a role in that win the other day against Memphis. Reed Lowe's joining us. Uh, your coach, Mike Steele, actually was an assistant coach for my middle school basketball team at A.G. Cox because his <laughs> son, Derek, uh, was a buddy of mine. He was on the team. Derek was a, a pretty good big man for us back then. Uh, I, the way he acted to us middle school kids, I can't imagine how he acted towards his, his college guys, Reed, but Coach Steele, uh, really funny guy. Uh, enjoyed uh, getting to know him after I played for him. Uh, but what do you remember about Coach Steele and him uh, leading the charge for East Carolina? Well, I can probably tell you one thing. He probably led the league in middle school technical. <laughs> no doubt. I know that. No doubt. Uh, no, I, I, I was thinking about it today um, before I came on, and um, I don't get back to Greenville as much as I would like to, and, and you know, and I, I probably don't talk to coaches as, as much as I would like as well, but we sort of just pick up where we've left off every time we get together, and um, you know, so I, I played for Charlie Harrison my freshman year, and, and then Mike came in uh, for my sophomore through senior year, and um, you know he was coming off a really successful career at at DePaul, and 
And, um, no, he was hard-nosed. I mean, we, look, we were, you know, our best year there in the four years I was there, I think when, when I was a junior, it was blues last year and we were like 15 and 14, I think. And, and, um, but we competed and he, he, he made us, you know, he made us compete and, and we were tough and, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, now that we've been gone for so long and we're able to reconnect and we can talk about our families and all that kind of, cause I watched Derek and Drew grow up and, that was wonderful and and you know and obviously sandy as well and um but he he's a really good guy and um you know um he definitely made me a better person um really set me up for once you know once i was done playing and um so i i miss those kind of talks with him um but hopefully i can can catch up with him soon the next time i'm in greenville yeah and you, you mentioned the family there and and mike definitely the uh the i guess the second most famous steel drew an absolute legend still here in greenville as you could imagine reed and uh you mentioned blue how about blues right down the road head basketball coach at green central high school so he returned to his old stomping ground so we got blue back in the area and reed i'm sure you played with some good players in high school and every night in college basketball but what well, what's that that separation like from from a, a pretty good college player to a Blue Edwards, an NBA guy. What, what was that like? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, we you know we played against some really good teams when I was there. But I, I remember doing something else. Somebody had asked me, you know, and, and we and, you know we played against Steve Alford, and we played against the Georgia Tech. You know, we played against a lot of good guys. But I think once you look back and look at it, and, and, and we were able to. Um, you know, witness him on a daily basis. And, um, you know, he was just, he was just something special. Um, and, you know, he had a unbelievable college career, um, that senior year. And then, you know, um, had a great NBA career. I think he was in the league for 10 years, I believe. Um, so yeah, I mean, he, he definitely the, the best player that, that, that I've, that I've seen. And, you know, even when we, you know, we played those Duke teams back in 86 through 90 and, you know, um, they got a lot of headlines, obviously being Duke, but, um, yeah, he's definitely the, the best player that I've ever played with and then obviously against in a, in a practice situation. Reed Lowe's joining us. Reed, if your stats are correct on sportsreference.com, uh, you attempted, <laughs> uh, 2.3 three pointers, um, a game during your career here. One year it was 3.6, another year exactly three. If you're playing in 2022, how many threes do you think you're jacking up a game? Ooh, that would be that. that coach still would have had something to do with that, but um, I would think that that would have been fun to try to get at least ten up a game. It's changed a lot, right? Yeah, you see so many guys utilizing the three, and that, and even on this team that I watch, I watch the uh, you know the Jackson kid shoot threes. Um, you know, the Johnson kid, you know, guys that are, you know, six, eight, six, nine that are, have the ability to stroke it from that three range. And, um, yeah, it definitely, you know, it, it definitely has changed and uh, a lot of teams focus on that three and, you know, and I never really looked at that stat, but that's actually really interesting. You're only shooting two to three a game. And, you, <laughs> and he probably thought you were shooting too much, right, Reed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he would have let me know. But, um, yeah, definitely uh, you see some of these box scores and guys are, you know, shooting, you know, 13 shots and 11 of them are from three. So it's really interesting. Yeah, completely different ball game. Talking to Reed Lowe's today here on Pirate Radio Live. How, how much do you, uh, and you mentioned you had a son that played some basketball. Do you still kind of follow the game? You say you follow ECU a little closer this year. Do you watch, you know, college basketball, NBA on a, a nightly basis, Reed? Yeah, I try to, you know, once I get settled in a little bit, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll flip through and, you know, find NBA games and, you know, um, and obviously there's a college game that seems to be on every night, you know, two or three games to watch and stuff like that. So I like, I like, um, I like tuning in and, and, and catching some of the games. And, um, and then obviously they've, they've got this, you know, they've got a big one this weekend, right? They've got to go to Houston, yeah. I think. So I'll be, um, you know, I'll be paying attention to that and it'll be interesting to see how they respond, right? They've got from the highs of highs, with that Memphis win, and then all of a sudden they go to the lows of lows with that with the um, second half the other night. So I, you know, I imagine Joe's probably, you know, interested to see how they respond in Houston and see if they go out and compete. And um, because in Myrtle Beach we watched them play Oklahoma, yeah. 
And I mean, they, you know, I think once they, they, if they can compete, you know, stay disciplined for 40 minutes, they can sort of battle with a lot of people. And, and, um, so it'll be interesting to see how they respond on Saturday. Man, we've talked about that this year, Reed. I, one of the most complete games they played was probably that second game in Myrtle Beach against Old Dominion. Uh, but you had the first half against Oklahoma, then the first half against Davidson, which uh, were really good. It's just this Pirate team can't put together two complete halves. And also, you talk about the last two games. ECU comes back from a 19-point deficit. They blow a 20-point lead. Uh, one reason we like sports is because it's reality TV. You never know what's going to happen. But, Reed, uh, it's uh, it's tough to explain, right, those momentum shifts uh, in a college basketball game. Akeem Richmond said it's a game of runs, and then that's the way it is, right? Yeah, there's well, he's definitely right, and you know, I remember you know learning mostly from, you know first from from Charlie and then then Mike. You know, we sort of broke the game down into like four or five minute games, right? Sort of first five minutes of the game, the last five minutes of the half, the first five minutes of the second half, and then the last five minutes of the game. And if you break them down that way, you can see where those runs happen. And I think the other night. And I, again, I didn't watch it live, but you know, as I'm following the play-by-play on the ESPN app, you can sort of see what was going on a little bit. And and I think I commented on one of the platforms that it may have been one of those scenarios where they were they were playing not to lose. Yeah, that's really really hard to do. And and, and a lot of people have have commented on that. And once you get into that situation and your mindset is there, sometimes it's really really tough to get out of it. Um, and you know, it, you know, your hands are tied a little bit because the momentum just, you know, they keep, they keep banging threes on you and you can't get stops and then you might turn it over and, you know, everything just sort of falls out of, out of, out of the, uh, out of the basement a little bit. So it's just, um, it's just one of those things where they, you know, I don't know that team that well and how they're made up in regards to leadership. I think, you know, I try to think back when we, we were playing that, that was probably one of those times where you needed some floor leadership from one of the players rather than always coming from Joe or the assistants to really look at guys and go, listen, we need to get some stops and string some stops together in order to stay in this thing and then try to close the deal and, um, and then go from there. But I mean, they look, those kids, they, they want to win more than anybody. Yeah. So it's just, you know, I struggle sometimes cause I know that the pirate faithful, um, you know, will will start hammering them a little bit, and um, some of that stuff is not warranted what they say, and you know, so and with me being an ex player, and you know, sort of some pride there, you know, I sort of take some, you know, sometimes offense to that kind of stuff. But sure. hey, look, they're 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 trying to. Um, they're trying to win games, you know, as much as they can, those kids. And, man, there's another change from your playing days, right, Reed? Like, how tough would it be for you to not go on Facebook or Twitter or an app after the game and see what people are saying about you? You know, like, that, that's all people do these days, right? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, listen, I've, I've, I've crafted um, many um, tweets and have erased them. <laughs> judgment. But, um, yeah, it's just um, – I just think sometimes people react really quickly after the game. Yeah. And in, in some of the comments are, are, you know, you get a sense like, you know, they don't know what they're doing. You know, Joe's this, Joe's that. I, I just know, and, and I'm sure you've talked to Mike, and that team is really, really good. They, they, they've got some really nice pieces. And, um, you know, and Joe is, is really good at what he does. And, you know, so I'm excited for them, um, you know, to try to see what they do on Saturday. And, and see how they close out this year and then, you know, moving forward. Because I think Joe's going to continue to get guys that can that can play, um, you know, um, into Greenville, and, and, and that's only a positive thing for that program. Good insight from Reed Lowe's today. Reed, uh, East Carolina back to uh, their winning ways in football after a good year, and Cliff Goblin looking to get East Carolina back into a super regional in baseball. So pretty good time uh, to be a Pirate, uh, and hopefully you can get here to Greenville sometime and then check out a game, Reed. We'd love to uh, yeah. to have you here uh, and then join us here in studio. Or if you get to a football game, definitely check us out on the uh, the Pirate Radio tailgate zone. Yeah, I'd, yeah, no, no question, and I appreciate the offer, and, and I, I've got it. I do want to get back. I see the, um, I see the uh, pictures of the baseball games, and I would, and I used to go to the games when I was in school, and I yeah. loved going to them. And but man, I'll tell you what a program they've built. Yeah, that is awesome to see, and I guess they're 
are they ranked number eight? I think right now in the preseason poll or something like that. Yes, yeah, high as eight. Which uh, which Cliff Godwin says ignored that read, but us fans we can yeah, talk about it, right? He's right. I saw that, and it, and it is true. That stuff doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, to coaches and players, but the fans like to see it, and they can, and they like to build on it a little bit. But um, that that place looks like it's an absolute. Um, you know, really cool place to watch a game. No doubt. Hopefully, I can get back to catch one of those. Hey, Reed, great talking with you today, man. Appreciate it, and uh, and maybe we'll uh, catch up with you later on in the year. Talk more basketball with you. I really enjoyed it, and uh, glad to hear you're doing well. And uh, we'll uh, we'll catch up with you again down the road, Reed. Thanks for joining us today on the show, man. You got it. I appreciate you guys. Reed Lowe's joining us today on the Pirate Radio Live Line. That was cool to. Uh, to talk some basketball with the former Pirate and get his thoughts on what's going on today with East Carolina. All right, let's uh, take a break. We'll come back when we return. We'll talk about some games going on tonight in college basketball, and we'll look at the NFL divisional round as well. Jeff Nadeau, big man on campus, joins us when we return after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new 2022 Cadillac CT5 and save up to $1,500 off. As always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the convention center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. I can't think of anyone who doesn't love a clean car, but how often do you actually go to the car wash? Does it take too long, or maybe it's just not a very nice place? Tommy's Express changes everything. Our wash is bright, inviting, clean, and fast. I love the flat conveyor belt. So easy to pull onto, much smoother ride, and safer for my car. And when you join Tommy Club, you can wash as often as you like for one low monthly price. I save money and time. We're Tommy's Express. At the corner of Greenville Boulevard and Red Banks Road, Greenville. Hey, this is John Grillo, the Bagel Man. You know I love bagels. I don't settle for frozen bagels. That's why we make our bagels right here in Greenville from scratch every day. If you're coming into Bagel Man, you'll notice that there's some renovation going on. Our menu is bigger and better than ever. Our sandwiches, heroes, subs, salads, wraps, bagel dogs, fresh baked pastries, and our new coffee bar. Soon we're going to be opening for dinner. Don't forget Bagel Man for all your catering needs on Fire Tower Road in Greenville. Here today with Dr. Shondell Jones from Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness. Dr. Jones, a lot of exciting new things going on. Yes, so you may have seen our new facility, but we also have a private courtyard. There's an outdoor private area where we have artificial turf where it's fenced in, and we're going to be having our sunset yoga classes there. Those classes allow you to develop increased flexibility, more energy, and get better sleep. So come on and check those classes out today. Come by and see us, Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness, Arlington Boulevard, or check us out online at kptonline.com. Although innovative new resources such as digital media and social networks have grown in popularity, smart marketers recognize that printing is a mainstay. We live in an age of computer hacking, scams, and fly-by-night businesses, so it's reassuring to consumers when they receive printed marketing pieces. It exemplifies business confidence and conveys a high level of commitment. It also fosters trust, which leads to engagement and ultimately brand loyalty. When you're ready to grow your business, come to PIP, where business goes to grow. Get the best of the best for less at Bostic Sub Furniture. The best name brand furniture at savings up to 15% off store-wide plus 12 months special financing. Save on the best looks for your home. Save up to 70% off clearance items or get 72 months special financing. Get your best night's sleep on a comfortable new mattress with 72 months special financing. It's better than the rest. It's the best of the best. And it's going on now at Bostic Sub Furniture. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Scott Harris with REMAX Preferred Realty. I've been in Greenville over 25 years. I'm a proud graduate of ECU. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, then give me a call today and let me help make your real estate process fun and easy. I keep it simple and explain the process every step of the way. My goals are your goals. There are no long-term contracts, and you always deal with me from start to finish. The right home starts with the right agent. Call me, Scott Harris, at 347-1857. Go Pirates! Hey dads, it's back. Plan to join us for our 6th annual Daddy Daughter Dance Friday, February 11th at Rock Springs. 
This event will be a fun night of games, music, photo keepsakes, raffle tickets, and of course, dancing. Best of all, 100% of the proceeds will go to Daughters for Dads, which supports local families affected by cancer. Sponsorship opportunities are also available. Purchase your tickets today by going to eventbrite.com and search for Daughters for Dads. We will see you Friday, February 11th at Rock Springs. This is Amanda Houston, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Go Pirates! listening to hour two of pirate radio live now back to the show welcome back tommy's express car wash come experience the difference at tommy's now open at the corner of greenville boulevard and red banks road doesn't your car deserve it visit tommy's express car wash today now let's head back into prl here's clip Alrighty, back with you here on pirate radio live it is free beer thursday on the show today so if you would like an opportunity to win a 12-pack of Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda and a Pirate Radio hoodie. You can chime in on our Facebook, uh, or excuse me, our YouTube. We're going YouTube today. Subscribe to Pirate Radio TV on YouTube and chime in with your favorite East Carolina player of all time. Susan Dean's just chimed in with Dwayne Harris. Newton is in with Shane Carden. Uh, Robert says Blue Edwards, going back to the basketball days. And uh, let's see, what else do we got up here? We've got David Gerard from Kevin Cozart. Zeke Bigger, says John Moody. And uh, Robert says, Musa Badian, a great center from the early 2000s uh, here with East Carolina basketball. Let's see uh, Jeff Nadeau. He's joined us to talk a lot of ECU over the past few years. He joins us on the Pirate Radio Live line. Jeff, uh, when you think East Carolina, you know, all-time favorite Pirate athlete, who stands out to you? Uh, that's a great question. I would probably say, uh, I would say Justin Hardy, probably. Justin Hardy had uh, hands you could count on. And uh, how about the guy who overtook Justin Hardy and broke his record for catches, Zay Jones, a uh, touchdown in the playoffs last week. Of course, the Raiders lose, but good to see Zay playing well and uh jeff appreciate your time back on the show man what a, a couple of games for the pirates they come back from 19 down to beat memphis and then the other night they're up 20 and they lose to ucf i'm used to seeing these comebacks in the nba but man uh two comebacks like that i've witnessed them both in Minji's jeff it's been crazy these last two games yeah i actually had uh ucf the other night it was probably the uh the best cover i've had i mean sometimes they work out for you sometimes they don't um you know, you're on the wrong side of that but yeah um you know but this is what uh east carolina i didn't think they could do hang against teams you know be the be the kind of thorn in team size and that's what they've been uh now they gotta you know get back on the horse and and, and go play a really good houston team uh, in houston you know which i, I guess if you want to play houston i mean you know this part of the season is the best part. I mean, they're without certain players. It hasn't mattered, though. They've just been rolling. Yeah, not the team you want to face after uh, blowing the lead like that, but it will be the Cougars up next on ESPN2 uh, coming up this Saturday, East Carolina and Houston. Jeff, uh, let's look at tonight's action. Uh, just because there's a game coming up in 30 minutes, we'll, we'll highlight it. Uh, Georgetown at Providence. Providence, a big favorite at home, nine. Uh, total at 142 and a half. Uh, any interest on this one coming up about 30 minutes from now? Yeah, I mean, I'm not running the bet on Providence. Uh, I saw today they're going to be without A.J. Reeves, one of their better players. Um, you know, they're always a good back at home, but, you know, there's a lot of points. you got to lay doubles, basically, with this one. Um, you know, kind of a weird start time. Uh, maybe the, um, the focus isn't completely there. Uh, you know, Georgetown's not great. So, yeah, I could see Georgetown maybe hanging in and, 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 and keeping this game close, but uh, I, I didn't have much on it. I didn't play it. Uh, Jeff, I know you like Purdue heading into the year. Tonight, Purdue is a three-and-a-half point favorite on the road at Indiana, total at 140-and-a-half. What do you think about the Boilers to this point in the season, and how about particularly tonight when they take on the Hoosiers? 
I, I still would have them towards the top of college basketball. If you're asking me about overall rosters, overall team, I think they're right there with Gonzaga and, and, and some of the others that are at the top. You know, this offense outside of Gonzaga is the best offense in America. Um, they're good from every part of the basket. Um, Jay Ivey is, I mean, one of the best players in the country, quite frankly. They have shooters galore. They defend. Eric Hunter might be the best defender in the country. And they got... Williams, who's an all-Big Ten player. And this kid, Zach Eady, what a player he's turned into. 20 or more in four of the last five games. I mean, you imagine, Clip, uh, having to face a, an individual that's seven foot four, 300 pounds. I mean, it's, it's just hard to, to, to really understand. I mean, he's the second-best offensive rebounder in America. He's the 21st-best defensive rebounder. He's got a block rate close to 9%. Uh, he doesn't foul. I mean, it's just... It's an incredibly tough team to deal with. I think Indiana's going to have major issues. Zach Eady made Coburn look mortal the other day. <laughs> uh, Trace Jackson Davis is hurt. I don't think it's a great matchup. Indiana generally has issues with these types of teams. I think Purdue just continues to get the job done. Uh, they didn't have a hurt trouble the other night. They were the better team. Indiana continues to have turnover issues. That's problematic against uh, really, any team, Purdue will make you make you pay for those. I laid the three and a half there. All right, liking the uh, the Boilers coming up tonight, Jeff. A couple of AAC games I want to ask you about. Memphis is a six point favorite now against SMU. Does this line tell you that what SMU's done so far, maybe Vegas doesn't believe in because they've gotten off to a really good start in the American? Does it say that Memphis is maybe getting some guys back? Uh, well, you know, Memphis is so erratic. Do, you know, do they bounce back and, and win by more than six tonight against SMU? Yeah, I think this kind of tells you that you're probably going to get not only uh, Nolly back, but DeAndre Williams as well. This, mm. this game's probably one you want to keep an eye on. You know, you might you know, get some info a couple of, couple minutes before, uh, and you, you take a shot here. Kind of starts to remind me a little bit of Kentucky last night. They kind of didn't make sense, the number they were laying, and they ended up, uh, they ended up not covering, but they were in control. Yeah, why is Memphis a seven-point favorite? I mean, do you want to bet on them as a seven-point favorite? No. <laughs> it looks like that spot that they had a couple of weeks ago against Alabama. The difference right. here is, um, you know, SMU is not Alabama. So, yeah, I um, I think they're going to get some reinforcements back tonight for Penny, uh, and they'll have one of those games. Then they'll lose to, like, you know, a Tulsa or somebody. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I think this is the good game tonight. I think they win by double digits. I'm going to keep an eye on this one, maybe bet it live. Cincinnati, uh, a home favorite tonight, eight-point favorite over Tulsa, who uh, I think has hung in games but struggled uh, getting wins here so far this season. Uh, Pac-12 action tonight, Arizona at Stanford, UCLA, Utah, Washington, Oregon State, and the Zags. Uh, Gonzaga in action tonight, big favorites over San Fran. So as you look at the rest of the slate, Jeff, anything uh, standing out to you for Thursday evening? Yeah, I'll bring up two games. You mentioned Tulsa. Uh, Cliff, look at their games in, in this conference. Let me explain. SMU lost by five. Memphis lost by three. Temple lost by five. Houston lost by two. Uh, this team hangs in games anytime they're above two possessions. I think you have to take a shot with them. They do a lot of things that really bother opponents. They play zone, which will be good against Cincinnati. They can't shoot. They also don't turn the ball over Tulsa. They're good from the line, and they make threes. All recipes to stay in games. Uh, if you're going to give me eight points, I would lean Tulsa. Frank Haith, not a great coach, not a good coach, not a bad coach. He's kind of in the middle. He bothers opponents. I kind of like Tulsa here. As far as Arizona, um, this is a really interesting game, Clip. You're not going to have fans tonight out at Maples Pavilion and Stanford. Uh, Tommy Lloyd, the coach at Arizona, has mentioned the turnovers have pro- been problematic in conference play, and it's had a lot to do with some of the crowds they've had to deal with. Um, and some of the road atmospheres they've had. It hasn't mattered, though. They have one of the highest scoring margins in the country. When they beat you, they beat you. Tonight, Stanford, who can't defend in transition. Uh, Arizona's way bigger than they are. Um, I think Arizona gives them all sorts of problems. This one's been bet up from 9.5 up to, I think, 12. Uh, I played it in the middle. I like Arizona. I think they went big to them. Jeff Nadeau joining us, looking at college hoops coming up tonight. Good slate of games, and uh, we got the divisional round of the NFL playoffs coming up on uh, Saturday and Sunday. You can hear the games right here on Pirate Radio. Jeff, what's your uh, your favorite play of the weekend for NFL? Do you got one yet? 
Uh, yeah, I would say over 47, Bengals and Titans. I'm pretty happy with both these offenses. They've both been very good all season. They're both terrific in the red zone, scoring touchdowns, which, Clip, when you bet on NFL and you want overs, you need touchdowns, not field goals. The percentages, Tennessee, sixth in the NFL. Uh, Cincinnati, uh, they're approaching 60%. So I think both these teams score in the red zone. I don't love either defense. I think they'll kind of uh, collude and just kind of both give up 24-plus points. I think it's first the 28 wins. I'll take the better run game to the home team, lean Tennessee. But I like the over here, 47, I think it's a little too low. All right, uh, Tennessee, uh, they're putting up some points. How about – did you? Uh, we might have asked you about this one the other day. I mean, uh, Bill's Chiefs, is, is this a, a toss-up in your eyes? Who has the edge, in your opinion, in Arrowhead on Sunday? The Bills have the edge. You look at the game clip, um, 64% of the bets are on the Chiefs, but 80% of the money is on Buffalo. Strong, hmm. sharp money coming in on Buffalo. I think Sharps are saying, look, we're going to get Josh Allen. We're going to get the, uh, you know, probably the, the, the casino side here. I don't think novice betters are playing the Bills. They just don't. They trust Mahomes. They like Arrowhead. But bad at matter when it comes to the Bills. They have the better defense. They have the better quarterback, at least at this point to me. Uh, I want the Bills. I think they get some revenge and beat the Chiefs. I agree. All right, big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau, joining us. If you want to talk uh, NFL, college hoops, he's always uh, you know answering questions on social media. Also, I got to see the show Gamora that you keep tweeting about, Jeff. I've never watched it. Well, Clip, I'll tell you this. Um, I think when you watch it, I think you'll have to – Tell yourself, I'm going to spend the next month watching the masterpiece that it is. <laughs> there are a lot of people that will never watch it because it's Italian and they don't like subtitles. But I'm telling you, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I talk about the mafia for a living, basically. Uh, it is the most vivid television show I've ever seen. Uh, and I am I could watch it every day and never get tired of it. This season is out in 10 days uh, on HBO Max. So I'm, I'm all ears. I can't wait. I uh I've got all these streaming services now, so I I kind of Google like best movies or movie recommendations. So I have really dipped my toe into a lot of foreign films uh, that people rave about. So I am uh, I'm not a I'm not a, not only am I not opposed to subtitles, I I have subtitles on while I'm watching regular shows. So I'm I'm into it. The thing that I I really respect about this show clip, and and it, there's two things that I've highlighted about it that are that are incredible. There are four seasons, including a film about this show, and in the four seasons that they have, I can count on one hand the amount of laughter I've seen in this show. There's hmm. no forced comedy. There's no forced sexuality. There's no forced anything. It's vivid. It's realistic. It explains who these people are, vivid, sociopathic criminals that uh, kill people. It doesn't matter if you're a woman, a child. It doesn't matter. There's no funny things about it. It's just vivid and real. It's incredible. Jeff Nadeau joining us with a shout-out to Gamora. Big man, uh, good luck tonight and this weekend. We'll be watching the hoops and the football and uh, chiming in with you on social media. Follow him on Twitter at Jeff NADU. And uh, we appreciate your time as always, big man. Always look forward to talking to you, Clip. Thanks, man. All right, there is Jeff Nadeau joining us today on Pirate Radio Live. We will take a time out, come back, and wrap up our number two of today's show. We'll run over our list of names. All you got to do to enter in to our free beer Thursday giveaway contest. You got to be 21 or older. But head over to YouTube, subscribe to Pirate Radio TV, jump in the chat box for our live show today, and type in your favorite East Carolina athlete of all time. And we'll uh, run over the list of who we got so far. We're doing our drawing in hour three, so you got about 20 minutes left if you want to jump in. Head over to YouTube now and be a part of it and sign yourself up for a great giveaway. Our Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda 12-pack giveaway. Also, a hoodie, a Pirate Radio hoodie could be yours as well. More to go on Pirate Radio Live. We're back after this. The Bud 
Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of pirates in ENC. Open seven days a week. Plus, the Buck has live music every night, along with football. The Buck has a brand new 15-foot 4K screen, the only one in Greenville, and over 18 big screens with all your college and pro action. Sunday Fun Day will also be stocked with the biggest Bloody Mary and Mimosa Bar, along with the NFL Sunday Ticket and food trucks out back. Check out the Buccaneer Music Hall. Open every day, noon until 2 a.m. with live music every night, and now football and food trucks during the day. Grow Rug 26 is coming to Greenville March 25th through the 27th. This is DJ Fossil from F3 ENC inviting all men to sign up now for this leadership training event. The Grow Rug training events are designed to help men become high impact men by reinforcing the F3 mission of invigoration of male community leadership. To register or to learn more, please visit F3ENC.com. That's F3ENC.com. Remember, you don't have to be great to get started, but you've got to get started if you want to be great. Zero percent alcohol, zero grams of sugar, full Budweiser flavor. For all the moments you want to be here and need to stay on your game. Budweiser Zero, zero alcohol, zero compromise. Burgers, wings, hand-cut, hand-breaded chicken tenders, fresh salads, and cold beer is the starting lineup at Tiebreakers and has been keeping customers happy for 20 years. Tiebreakers Family Atmosphere is the perfect place to come watch your favorite team play while enjoying a great lunch or dinner. In a hurry or looking for catering options? Get Tiebreakers to go. That now includes the new curbside pickup by ordering online at tiebreakersnc.com. Tiebreakers. There's no better time to drive away with a quality pre-owned car, truck, or SUV from Greenville Auto World. Greenville Auto World is your authorized rough country dealer. We specialize in lift and leveling kits along with custom wheel packages. Whether you're looking for ground clearance or enhancing the appearance of your vehicle, trust our team for your off-road experience. Greenville Auto World, 3840 South Charles Boulevard across from Hardy's at Bells Fork or online at greenvilleautoworld.net. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With Blackwood and Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden, these are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders Homes. They can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or East Carolina football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes, and they can build yours as well. BMS Builders. Give them a call at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Matt Driscoll. Please join us at A.J. Fletcher Music Hall or live stream on February 17th at 7.30 p.m. when Durward Ensemble will be on the campus of East Carolina University presenting works from our upcoming album, Prophetic Revolutions, and a world premiere by ECU alumna in Miss America 2019, Nia Franklin. If you would like to learn more or support our group, go to our website, durwardmusic.com. We look forward to seeing you Thursday, February 17th. Hey, Pirate fans, did you know there are thousands of special needs children and adults right here in our community that loves ECU athletics as much as you do? Robbie's Clubhouse is a local nonprofit organization that can turn your unused ECU tickets into a fun day for a family with special needs. If you can't make it to the next Pirate game, simply call 1 800 DOL ECU and donate and designate your tickets for Robbie's Clubhouse. Go, Pirates! Pirate Radio. It's going to change. I promise you. As I stand here, it will change. Okay, and when it does, that stadium, it's going to be rocking, and heaven help whoever walks in there to play us. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Did you miss a show on Pirate Radio? Well, you can listen to all of Pirate Radio's archived local programming by subscribing to us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, or Spotify. Subscribe today by going to the podcast app on your iPhone or Apple device and search for Pirate Radio Audio Archives. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here is your host, Clip Rock. 
Alrighty, back with you here. Hour two of Pirate Radio Live on our three hour tour. Got touchdown Tony Collins. Man, his Patriots took a whooping the other night. We'll talk about that, the rest of the NFL playoffs. And also, we'll crown our winner for today. Troy D alongside. Hello, Troy. How you doing? Doing good, Clip. How are you? I enjoyed uh, Reed Los. Yeah. Blast from the past. You know, that was about, th- those were back in my days in Minji's. Back Late when it, 80s. When it was just Minji's, there was no Williams Arena. It was the wooden bleachers that you pulled out. And uh, in fact, a friend of mine posted a picture of Morgan. You might have seen it online. Uh, Morgan Ehlers from like 30 years ago back in the olden bleacher days in the mid 90s before they re- redid this i think it was like 96 they redid Minji's, but um it was rocking back in the caa days yeah we had some great times back then as a student it was basically you know you just had left it was like a big high school stadium and the stu- it was standing room only kind of on the wooden bleachers and it was a lot of fun back then i remember going as a kid i was friends with uh with coach Steele's son Derek, and mm-hmm. we you know going to games when i was really young and how loud and how much fun it was i don't even remember the games really i just remember uh and he taught uh reed lowe's talked about rivalry games with wilmington oh and man those, playing those caa games. opponents it, that was some of the best atmospheres i've ever even to this day yeah just because the way it was built how close you were to the court how it was just right on top of it, it was kind of like cameron how cameron indoor is that lower level and I asked him. I, I I called it like what are the, those hot games in Minji. For, I don't know. It I just hot. remember it being like it was always hot. tight and hot, like yes. a high school gym. That's like exactly you said. right. Very humid. Yeah. No matter what the temperature was outside. But uh, that was fun. Those were some great memories. I wish I had like more videos of that. Well, now Troy's watching uh, <laughs> Jeff Blake in the Peach Bowl. Uh, you're, I, we're just going down memory lane here today. Well, we did, uh, you know, we put this out here on social media. I was got to say it's got a lot of traction. I want to do, and I hope we can run it later. Maybe when Tony gets here, the audio, it's a two minute cut. But, uh, you know, Ron Franklin, who narrated this as the play by play voice, it his call of this is as spectacular as the game of the 92 Peach Bowl. Well, Chandler, um, we did run this yesterday. Has your, I, I know, but okay, I was. All right, here. I was just making sure you were, yeah. And I was uh, tied up yesterday, so I would love to hear it. Yeah, we'll, we'll Maybe run that. An encore. And then the crowd pop at Dowdy Ficklin on the interception by Van Eskridge. We can listen to that a thousand Another times. Another great Ron care. Franklin call. I mean, he called two of ECU's best moments. He did. In football. And, and I will tell you, Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey, for my money, was the Pat Summerall and John Madden of college. You know, they were as good of a duo in college as Summerall and Madden were in the NFL. And th- those guys, when they did your game, it was a big-time game, and they brought a big-time feel to it on the broadcast. No doubt. I'm looking up uh, Tim Brando. He uh, he called it perfect when he was talking about the passing of uh, Ron Franklin. I'm trying to, to find that tweet where he said, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, Franklin. Eh, I, I'll find the tweet in a moment. He had a uh, a great way to summed put it, it up pretty good in his passing. I'm trying to find it, but anyway, Ron Franklin. Well, and I I think of those ECU moments, but I also think of like SEC Saturday night, yeah, things like that, and mm-hmm. the, just the golden pipes uh, that he had. He had a great voice, yeah. So uh, it, it's synonymous with college football, big games, like you yeah. said. Uh, and we'll talk more about that when Tony Collins is here coming up in hour three. What I was about to get to, Troy D, is we're doing a giveaway today. And uh, you can chime in on this. I, I don't know if I know your exact answer. I know the era you're going to say. Uh, but I'm asking everyone's favorite pirate, favorite pirate athlete today on YouTube. Which sport? Uh, any sport. Mm, gosh. Favorite athlete. Favorite uh, Don't pull a Bryce Williams on me. God, dang. Gosh. Bryce. <laughs> I asked him, like, one. it took him a good five minutes to come up with a winner for one of the playoff games yesterday. <laughs> I said you had to know you were going to bring this up. He is not good on this fly. He's very noncommittal. Yeah, Yeah, when it comes to asking questions. (laughs) Bryce, what's your favorite color? And it's like he's he's taking the SAT. Like like he's trying to get into college. There's no wrong answer. Just answer the question. I appreciate him taking it seriously. He he must have needed like five hours to take the SAT. Oh, Oh my God. They must have allowed allowed special time for him. Or they something. let me go to overtime. Yeah. Uh, Clip, is this the Tim Brando tweet you're talking about? Just heard the news of the passing of the human larynx. Human larynx. That's what I was looking for. I knew he had a, uh, a phrase in there. The human, human larynx. larynx. 
Hmm. Uh, for, uh, how are you going to say that word, by the way? Larynx. Okay. I, was, I, was on the, I was on that path. Yeah, wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. Let me see it. Larynx. starting to veer off that path a little Where bit. Is it? Maybe run off the road. Uh, that's larynx. 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 There's, no, there's no N in there? It is, but it's Between like the it's the larynx. X. Larynx. Dang. How do you say it? Larynx. <laughs> larynx. It's, it's larynx. larynx. Sorry, I'm, my, I'm my gonna, southern accent has I'm come out. Google larynx. It and see it have larynx. The, have the you audio can Google pull up. the yeah yeah. D- 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 you know you can hit. Google I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking pronunci- about. I tell you what, none of us are larynx. the human larynx. 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 But he went on to say, I prefer, larynx. He went on to say, I prefer remembering him for the incredible voice and talent he possessed. A perfectionist, he needed and demanded a level of concentration of himself and those around him. An outdoors an outdoorsman like Kurt Gowdy, rest in peace. All right, Mike uh, online saying it's Lorax. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was the Dr. Seuss uh, that it was. Yes. One. Yeah. Uh, head over to YouTube. Last call. Uh, you need to subscribe to Pirate Radio TV and chat uh, on our chat box. Type in your favorite ECU athlete. You'll be entered in with a chance to win today's prize. It's Free Beer Thursday, 12 pack of Bud Light Seltzer hard soda variety pack. We've also got a hoodie we're giving away That's today, nice. Troy D. Yeah. So we got a lot of answers edition. in. And uh, we'll run over um, these in the five o'clock hour. Got to answer. I got to answer your question. Do you have an answer? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I'm Hold on. Go. Let me guess first. All right. I mean, it's got to be either Jeff Blake or Robert Jones. I would think. I'm going to go Robert Jones. I'm going to say Jeff Blake. Well, one of you is right and one of you is wrong, and that's a good guess that it would be down to those two guys. Uh, I just, if I got to pick one, man, this guy just kept you in the game every single time and magic could happen anytime this guy touched the ball he's still the greatest quarterback in ecu history jeff blake all right now if we were both wrong i was going to go the luke fisher route i mean luke was uh, one of the greatest tight ends in history and then scored the greatest touchdown in history did you hear the segment yesterday we were talking about luke fisher i missed it good what did y'all bash him no i I thought you might you definitely have me in your office for a meeting (laughs) potentially fire me when i didn't know his his jersey number and I did. Uh, 91, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I felt pretty ashamed by that. It's okay, Clip. I'll give you a pass on that. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. I, 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 was, I, I was eight, nine years old. That's okay. So give me you a break. You don't have to know his jersey number. Okay. All right. As thanks, long as you George. respect him as a player in person. He's a I great res- guy, too. I respect him. If you were talking bad about him. Never would I do that. I just couldn't remember the dang jersey number. Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay, okay good. I'm not going to be upset about that. All right. Well, I take stuff like that seriously. Yeah, I know. Me, so. Boy, you yeah. You're a little too hard on yourself, Cliff. Now, if I said, what Peach Bowl pirate does Troy like to imitate the most and do the voice, it would be Robert Jones. (laughs) Troy, every time he joins the Brian Bailey show, he always says, Troy, Brian, I'm going to be on your show. Robert Jones, great interview. I texted him the other night uh, with Zay. We exchanged exchanged some uh, communications. I don't know. We were a little personal, but... um, I did reach out to him after the uh, game with Zay. I know he's uh, he was happy after that one, even though the Raiders lost. Zay had a great year. Yeah, I mean, I think he was a little... Well, yes and no. Uh, you know. But I don't know I what don't I can share. It was a private conversation, okay. so I don't want to share it. All right. But Fine. I'm just saying. Well, I've seen some of his social media posts while Zay's playing. I, and yeah, yeah. No, he's very proud of Zay. <laughs> I don't mean yeah. to. Th- th- I don't mean to take it in that direction. Yeah. I think there were some other things he's he's not as happy about. But, okay. You know, but Rob, the one thing I like about Robert is he's not afraid to have an opinion. That is true. He keeps it you real. <laughs> a, a lot of guys just are kind of blah and just oh, I don't want to upset him. But you know, yeah. Robert will tell you how he thinks. He speaks his truth. Yeah. But uh, I'm a big Robert Jones fan. We got a few uh, nominees coming in. Stan says Nick Johnson is his oh, favorite yeah. pirate athlete. Had a great pick and almost a pick six against Virginia Tech in, in Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, Fred says Steve Logan with his second favorite being James Pink. Well, Steve Logan's not a pirate radio athlete. And you I know, did pirate, say uh, ECU pirate athlete. I did say before it could just be a student, like it could be me or Troy. So uh, it's fine uh, if you cool. nominate a coach. I Shane Carden's a, a great candidate. Carden has been said by multiple people I, I'm to a, this point. You know, Shane Carden's a awesome pirate. I've, I've enjoyed getting to know him. Mike P said CJ two K. We had a Blue Edwards uh, from Robert Troy D. Yeah. Who's your all time favorite basketball player? <sighs> That's a good. I would say I. Th- oh, let me. I I, 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 I I have it. Can I take a guess? I, and you're probably going to get it. <laughs> oh, uh, let, 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 let me ask you this. Position. What position is he? He's a guard. I think a point guard. Yeah, you're going to get it. Lester Lines? Yep. 
I know Troy God, better than know Troy. Knows I know. Troy. Lester Lyons, the quarterback of <laughs> the 93 Dream Team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Dream Team. <laughs> that went to the NCAA tournament. No team since has been. How many people in this room have been have witnessed ECU in the big dance in person? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah. I'm raising my hand. No one else. Chandler wasn't born. Congratulations. Right. My point. That's I how was, special it was. That was five years before I was even born. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's how special it was. That like, was that was my dad's favorite. Some of too, you guys Lester didn't Lyons. even exist. It hasn't happened since. I was lucky enough to be there in Winston Salem to witness. Lester Lyons, a friend and a visitor of the Pirate Radio Tailgate. I know. Club. I talked to him this fall. It was awesome to see him again. But uh, he was an exciting player. He was the, kind of the Jeff Blake of the basketball court. How many people watched East Carolina in the tournament in my parents' living room live? <laughs> That, that was just none of y'all were there, just me. Uh, I do remember that, Troy. You remember my story when I was there? I was a student then, yeah, and I was going to buy the T-shirt with had the ECU logo <laughs> and the seven other teams that were in that region, and whatever region, you know, Southeast Regional, whatever it was called. Troy D's biggest regret. And it, right it was here. like twenty bucks back yeah. then for the T-shirt. I'm like ah, twenty dollars. I was like, I don't know. You know what? It's got UNC's logo on it too. I don't know if I'd want to wear that with ECU's logo because they were that's who we were matched up against. So it had all the teams' logos that were in that region. I was like, I'll just get one next year. Yeah, we're going to make it again. Yeah. Who in this room wasn't even on earth? <laughs> Moral to the story, don't wait till next year what you can do right now, Clip. Yeah, especially There with may not basketball. be a next year is what I'm saying, folks. Man. And I'm still waiting for next, next year. year. <laughs> <laughs> 30 years later. I'm still waiting. No wonder Troy is so confused by time. He's still waiting for next year when ECU will be in the tournament. Yeah. All it takes is a conference championship. That's a, I mean, literally, they're just – All you got to do is win four games. Four games away in the tournament. It's yeah. easy. Just get hot it's at the right so time. It's so easy. I tell you what, if ECU would have uh, finished it off the other night, Troy would be in here saying, is this the year? Is, is, this, well, is and, this the year? And then you got Houston. If you knock Houston off at Houston. Hey, we're back. I mean, then all, all of a all sudden you're building on something right there. I mean, there. we did it last year. It was at home, I know. needless to say. but Yeah, in front of uh, 100 people. <laughs> Maybe now, not now, even you that. You want to talk about a storm the court situation. Yeah. If we didn't have this BS COVID deal last year, and Minji's is packed last year, what an awesome storm of the court situation that would have been. We would have had we would have been two for two these last two years storming the court. Yeah. Well, at least we got one in this year. Yeah. All right, let's uh John Moody says, Can you imagine? Imagine what? I don't know. What are we imagining? Yeah. I haven't even said AC that in a while. Going to the tournament? You'll say it. I haven't said it in a while. I don't know. Let's take a break. We'll come back. How's the weather outside? Frightful. Frightful. <laughs> I don't care about the weather. Oh, I you care the about weather. the weather. I don't want to talk about the weather. I texted him earlier this week. I said, hey, have you seen the forecast? What are your thoughts? <laughs> We're expecting did he text back? five to eight <laughs> possible inches. Fair weather, idiot. He did not text me back. They're going to be out there. <laughs> Look, they're going to be out there practicing tomorrow, and he's going to tell his players just that like it's not cold. Yeah. yeah. Pretend, don't worry about it. Yeah. Coach, the ball is literally getting stuck in the snow. Feel yeah. the damn ground ball. I don't we want just to hear act about like it. there's no snow there. <laughs> we can't see the ball because of the snow. Find it. <laughs> All right. They're gonna have to play with one of those yellow softballs. Tony Collins, always oh, early, is in he's the green here. room, ready to go. We will talk to touchdown Tony Collins and have our free beer Thursday winner when we return. And uh gonna relive the magic of Ron Franklin. And the greatest touchdown in ECU history clip. Can we promote that? You just did. Okay, I mean, I just want to make sure. I don't want to overhype it if we're not going to run it. Can we run it? Yeah, we can run it. Okay, I just want to make sure. I just want to get you on record. <laughs> right, I'm on the record. I can't wait to hear this. If we don't run it, Troy can sue me. I've only heard it 500 ball. times, and I'm just as excited to hear it next. Will Fisher score this time? We'll, I hope so. We'll I still see. get nervous. I still get nervous. Pass is caught. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Fisher will score. Wait, hold on, Ron. Let's <laughs> All right. See. Let's, let's see now. <laughs> knee knee might have been down. See, you know what was great about Mike Godfrey in that call? We'll, he let Ron Franklin work. We'll hear it. And he stayed quiet. We'll hear it. When we return, Hour 3, Pirate Radio Live after this. When I need jeans, I order online because I know exactly what I want. They have just one moving part. And if there's something wrong, I exchange them. Buying a vehicle, especially pre-owned, is way different. 
lots of moving parts. You don't want to get stuck. For a worry-free purchase, visit Phelps Chevrolet. We've been here in town a very long time. You know us. You know we stand behind everything we sell. Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. Come get you one. Do you suffer from allergies, asthma, or any other sinus problems? Perhaps professional cleaning of your air ducts could help. Family owned and operated in Winterville for over 22 years, Carolina Quality Air was the first certified duct cleaning company in Eastern North Carolina. From residential to commercial, they can handle any size job, big or small, including our studios here at Pirate Radio. Carolina Quality Air uses a sanitizer that kills mold in your duct work and over 100 viruses, including the coronavirus. Visit them online at carolinaqualityair.com. Domino's new warm oven baked dips and twist combos are making a lot of noise in the pizza world. Mm. Holy Ooh, cow. Wee, that's good. There's cheesy marinara with dippable bread twist. Mm. So cheesy. So tomatoey. Sweet and cinnamony baked apple dip. Mm. Now that is sweet. And melty five cheese dip. Hold up. Five cheeses. Try our new oven baked dips and twist combos or any three topping pizza for $7.99 each when you carry out from Domino's. Carry out only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. Excludes XL and specialty pizzas. Crust availability varies by size. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Avoid the long check-in lines and congestion at the big airports and fly local at PGV. Fast, convenient, and close to home, PGV has more American Airlines flights. Book today at aa.com. PGV, where the pirates fly. This is Martin Truex Jr., and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. This is Jeff Gibson with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Before anyone walks into your business, the outside is what they see. Make sure your first impression is a good impression with the right curb appeal. Hi, this is Daniel Andrews from Dan Andrews Lawn Service. We specialize in making your business look great. Let us handle all your professional landscaping needs. We do it all so you don't ever have to worry. Residential services are also available. Call us today at 717-8006 and we'll come out and give you a free quote. Taking care of your landscaping needs is all we do and we've been doing it for over 20 years. You can trust our reliable team at Dan Andrews Lawn Service covering all of Eastern North Carolina. Hey Pirate Nation, this is Tom with Team Coop Strong. We want to invite you to the Coop Strong race on March 19th. This unique race has a four mile course, a ruck division, and an awesome after party. Proceeds support the local nonprofit Coop Strong, which provides financial support for those fighting ALS, scholarships in memory of Dr. Nelson Cooper, and funding for ALS research. You can sign up at runtheeast.com and follow Coop Strong on Facebook for all of the details. As always, we appreciate your support and go Pirates! This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Domino's of Greenville has three locations to take care of you. Take advantage of the week-long carryout deal of all three topping pizzas for only $7.99. Order online today at Domino's.com. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip. All righty. Back with you here on Pirate Radio Live on a, a Thursday. Clip Rock. Touchdown Tony Collins in the house. 
Say that one more time. In the house. Troy D's in the house. Too. Hello. Good to see you guys. Hello. 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 What's up, Troy? Good to see you, TC. Hold on, brother. Looking good. You feeling good? Feeling good, too. Tony's in a great mood today. Tony's always in a good mood, but, man, he was extra <laughs> bopping in here. He's so <laughs> skipping in here. I thought we might get him on a bad day after what happened to the Patriots, but yeah. I guess he's They far. got us shellacking, didn't they? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> he got killed. <laughs> What happened? It's like a bulldozer. I did send in. you a text during the game. Yeah, I know. I, Why didn't you respond? I was sad, man. It was just, it was just a really. <laughs> it sad wasn't a day. taunting text. It was almost like a concern. Yeah, like yeah. A, right, you are you okay? Text. Was just like, but I was well, getting so text. many. Yes, I, it was. I was, I was getting so many. I was like, man, this is this is really bad. I did a welfare check and then I didn't get a response. <laughs> I'm like, now I'm more worried. Especially I, you, uh, it's like a parent <laughs> concerned for years, Tony, and, and you rag everybody. But on Facebook, you really get after the Bills fans. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so, yeah, I'm from that area. You yeah. know, I'm, uh, most of my friends are Buffalo Bill fans, and I hate the Buffalo Bills. The best part I thought you saw it after. I'm still gonna burn the Bills jersey. <laughs> Because I guess you were going to do that if the Patriots won. You were going to burn a jersey? Yeah. Did you do it? No. I, I was like, I never saw the jersey get burned. <laughs> well, uh, we'll talk more playoffs later on. And, and Troy also have uh, found an article, the uh, odds for the Bears' next head coach. We'll run over some well, okay. Yeah, there's a lot. I will say this for the Bears. Uh, they're interviewing a lot of people. I'm a little concerned they're putting too much weight into uh, Bill Polian, who is uh, – guiding this thing so i have a feeling we're going to end up with someone from the colts but they have to hire a gm too right they are hiring a gm also so i'm I'm just afraid he's going to just put one of his buddies in there yeah not the what's the best fit it's a little embarrassing for the bears organ it kind of tells you where they are as ownership embarrassing embarrassing (laughs) yeah embarrassing (laughs) that they can't function have a functioning search without the help of someone else i know you know i I mean you're, you're you're you've been born in this industry you've been in it your whole life the whole family and you don't know enough and have enough contacts in the nfl to be able to run the search yourself well we so, talk about it with college when they bring in these search things the nfl that's almost complete that's that's even worse almost i know yeah like this is that's all you guys do that's all you've ever done and they can't do the search themselves they, they need to go after the coach that got fired from the dolphins they've well. interviewed him and a lot of fan, a lot of people like him yeah. and uh the problem is once again they're putting it in Bill's hands, and he may do what's best for him and not what's best for the Bears. And there's no accountability because once his job's done, he's a he's an assi- a hired assassin, basically. Once he hires this guy, he's gone. So whether it works out or not, they, they can just blame him on it. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Before we move on, let's crown our winner for today, Troy Day. We're giving away a 12-pack of the Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda Variety Pack. Also, a sweet yeah. Pirate Radio hoodie, which I'm wearing right now. A large. And I say this... Troy D, a hundred percent. I mean this. I think you gave me a compliment the other day, and then you follow that up. But I don't like everything you do. If I don't like it, I just don't say anything. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm the same way. Uh, if I don't like something, I won't come out and say, "Hey, that sucks." I just won't and say I'm anything. Bash you just to be quiet. Yeah. This is the most comfortable hoodie I own, and awesome. I own a ton of hoodies. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> like Tony, I'm not just saying this to say it. I, I have one. Yeah. Is it not a comfortable it is, hoodie? It is yeah. Tell me it's ain't a comfortable it hoodie. It is comfortable. Thanks to our friends at University <laughs> Sports. Tell me it's not the greatest piece of clothing you've ever worn. <laughs> University Sports, we're the official apparel provider to Pirate Radio, and they can also make your hoodies. And All you right. could be saying that about your business, organization, or event. There you go. Contact us today at University Sportswear. ENC. It's just like this hoodie I got on right good. now. I mean, now, that is, is a different is style. But it's, that is also it a... It feels so good. Very yeah. comfortable. That is a limited edition. We did those as uh, basically Christmas gifts. And it is that is the sport kind of tech material there. Mm-hmm. It's like the athletic material, which a guy like you I know knows and loves. And you you fill it out so well, Tony. <laughs> I mean, you it do, makes sorry. you look even more athletic than you are. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. You look good. jacked in that thing. You been working out? Can I get back on track here? Yeah. But Clip, you look very comfortable. Thank you. Please stop touching me. <laughs> very cuddly. He said, Please stop touching me. <laughs> All right, uh, Troy D. I broke out the random number. Oh, generator. it is. I always thought this was a joke. And you it's love the random number generator. Oh yes, God. I do. Can I do it one time? Actually, uh, or have you already done it. I got to update it because we have twenty-one entries. Twenty-one. All right. So we're gonna one to twenty-one. We're okay. gonna get a sequence, and uh, I'm gonna hit again three times. Okay. And the number on the top is what we're going with. And I have every Every person who's in a number beside their name. Okay, fair so, enough. You ready so to go? The first Did time. you say you wanted to? Well, I'll do it the first time. All right, go ahead. So let's see. All right, there we go. There one, we go. one two, two, and. Uh, so the winning number is 
14 clip. At number 14. <clears throat> Did you see the second number that came up on the second random generator? It was right. my favorite number. Remember that from before? Yeah, but I already forgot it. It was 11. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But that was only on the second trial. the number you were when you played soccer? It was. Okay. Yeah. How'd you know? I was just guessing. Great, great guess. guess. Yeah. That was a great, great guess. guess. It was. <laughs> number 14 is a guy that we saw here, Shirley, not too long ago in the Pirate Radio studios. Uh, our buddy Ray, longtime Pirate Radio listener. Remember Ray Farrell from back in the oh, day? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Hang out, watch the show. Ray, Ray like started listening to us like when he was 12. <laughs> yeah. And he looked like he was 12 when he was at school, and now he's like has like grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had been working with Virginia Tech. Now he's yeah. back working uh, at East Carolina. Oh, really? Uh, I've seen Ray I think in a while. he's remote, um, but he came by and uh, dropped by oh, the studio. Awesome. Ray is our winner. So, Ray, if you could uh, contact us, send us a message, we will get. I uh, actually got to come pick it up. So, next time. Ray Farrell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray Farrell. Yeah. Next time you're around the area, we'll have this here waiting for you. Fantastic. He, is he kin to that actor? Uh, Steve was asking. Uh, Will what? Farrell's uh, nephew, actually. Okay. The hoodie's a large, by the way, that we give away. So uh, Ray's favorite. So what you had to do, Tony, today is chime in with your favorite pirate okay. of all time. Uh, Ray's was Dwayne Harris. Who, yeah, that's uh, good if I feed to the fire, if I only had to name one, I'd probably go with Dwayne. I would like to break it down. And that would be sport. your all time? Watching him play, yeah, huh. I, I, I would say Dwayne Harris. Yeah, uh, of course, Troy. You said Tony Collins, right? Was your favorite part? No, I said Jeff Blake. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, Tony. Yeah, I'm, no love. I'm yeah. okay. I'm okay. But he did say his second favorite was Robert Jones. So, <laughs> yeah. Again, not you. Yeah. Sorry, Tony. You're so old. I'm, I never got I'm, to see you play I'm, here. I'm on the list somewhere down the line. You're, you're on the list. You're, yeah, my, I'm on the list. you're one of my favorite I'm, pirate personalities. I'm on the list. I'm on the yeah. list. So. You, yeah, you definitely make the list. He's probably your favorite off field. I got to go, yeah. go, go down. In a my few power numbers. rankings of off field yeah. pirates' yeah. personalities, you're right up there, buddy. You're top three. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me feel better. <laughs> Tony, who's your favorite pirate athlete of all time? Favorite pirate athlete of all time? And you can't say yourself. Huh, I can't say myself. Oh man, that's that's a tough one, man. It's Bunk. <laughs> nah, that, that, that won't be it. <laughs> <laughs> that's for old time pirates. <laughs> there's, there's, people there's, are a going guys, um, there's a lot of good guys who I played with, man. But there's this certain guy who I roomed with for three years. Um, his name was Mike Hawkins. Uh, my favorite pirate. All right, my roommate. I like that. I got a personal story with yep. him. So good stuff. Um, Chandler, who'd you say your favorite? Did we ask you who's your favorite pirate? Uh. I was thinking about it. I, you can go with Dwayne Harris, Shane Carden, all the greats. Uh, mine would be probably Zeke Bigger because I remember way before he was even a starter on our defense, he played special teams. Oh, yeah. And he, special and, team and he was on the kickoff for, uh, the kickoff team. Yep. And we noticed, me and my dad going to the games, we noticed, like, who is number 44? Like, he, he'll just go down. It, it doesn't matter if you have the ball or not. He'll just, you know, knock the crap out of you. And I brought a buddy to a game with me one time, and he was like, so who do we need to watch out for? I said, you need to watch out for this number 44 right here. I think this was like his freshman year. I said, you need to watch 44. And it was against Houston. And the run, the return man for Houston like took like five steps, and there was Zeke Bigger and just laid him out. And then obviously he ended up being a, a leader on that defense. So. Also a go-to guy when it came to interviews. He was a great talker. Yeah, and we ran countless sound bites from yeah, Zeke. Bigger I was going to say that Zeke, and Zeke was all, all talk. Team. And the personality that he had was a was a. Now what's awesome. the what's the running back's name? I can't I can't think of his name. The running back Chris played Johnson. For Chris Johnson. I I can't believe that he because he's my second. Because to his me, name came up a Chris lot. Chris Johnson was one of the most exciting players to watch because every time he, he touched the ball, he had the opportunity yeah. to take it to the house. Here's a good list, Troy, that kind of spans times. Dwayne, Harris, this is from Charles. Dwayne Harris, Jeff Carr, yeah, and Mofo Morris Foreman, who I kind of remember. I wish I was a little bit older so I could appreciate it. Morris Foreman a little bit more. Yeah, every time he I, was a linebacker that also like returned punts and stuff right yeah like, he was a linebacker that returned punts yeah I believe so yeah <laughs> uh, and every time I think of Jeff Carr I think of like the bridge of his nose just bloody like he was one of those guys linebacker was just always like in the middle of it didn't he also have the big thing coming out of the back the a linebacker? neck roll yeah the, you remember that <laughs> I think Tony? he did yeah back in your day the I love linebackers neck roll. yeah yeah <laughs> neck roll Where's I'd be like roll? a receiver wearing a neck roll <laughs> <laughs> I just think they look badass uh, now everybody's kissing Tony's butt we got Tony Collins from Kenny Kerr Oh, and come Steve on. said Anthony Collins. Oh, now you're pandering, <laughs> people. <laughs> you're pandering. 
<laughs> I could have done that, and even I chose not to. I know. I'm impressed. But with you me, guys didn't see me play, so you don't oh, yeah. know how you don't know how good or how bad I was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you gotta We're gonna take other people's word for it. How do we even know you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? What if they lied to us? Wait, I hate to bring this up, but Troy did see you play live one game. Yeah, I did. He didn't I, look too good. That was a Super Bowl. I, yep. <laughs> I'm the only person in the studio, raise your hand, who saw Tony Collins play a game. <laughs> Once again, I'm the only one raising their hand. Got me again. Uh, so anyway, yeah. there you go. Good stuff. All right, congratulations to Ray. Although in your defense, in your defense, you did go against the greatest defense Pretty in the much. history of the NFL. Pretty much. So. Was that team uh, talking junk, Tony? Those Bears? Oh, the whole game. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. That's, that's, what's like, that's what's some of the, who I mean, are the best junk amazing. talkers on that team? Richard Dent, uh, the Richard, fridge. Actually, Richard Dent didn't call, talk too much. What's the Michael? Line, linebacker name? Number 55. I can't think of his name. Oh, it's uh, Singletary. No, not Singletary. Singletary was 50. Singletary didn't say nothing. He just, he just looked at you. He'd, he'd just stare you down. With those big eyes. Yeah. But I, can't, I can't forget the, I can't uh, remember the game. He said 50. His number was 55. He's the outside linebacker. Talk uh, plenty. Oh, I mean, the whole game he talked. McMichael? No. He was a lineman. McMichael's a lineman. Uh, lineman. Uh, Otis Wilson? 55? 55, whoever he oh, was. Oh, yeah. He was, That's who I got Yeah, for the Bears. Yeah. He was, oh, the whole game. I, I was so him. tired of him talking. Do you remember Ron Rivera playing at all? Going, was I, he a good Was he a good I was going to ask about Ron Rivera. Uh, he, he, was a, he played special teams. He, hmm. he didn't start on, on defense. Okay. Uh, there you go, Troy D. Today is Troy D. Memory Lane Day. We're going to play some Ron Franklin here in a moment. So, <laughs> 85 Bears, old 80s ECU basketball. We're getting it all in today. Getting me all choked up here. Yeah. Uh, You're helping me with the weather situation. You want to hit the uh, the Franklin? Yes, I do. God, this don't, if you're listening right now, I urge you. If you're getting ready to get hold out of your car, second. can you tell me who this switch? Franklin guy is? Hold on a second. Don't <laughs> everybody go hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> Let's see. You're Let's getting, see. Let's hear. Let's you're hear. You're getting it. ready to hear the greatest moment. The greatest in, moment. E- listen, Tony. I'm listening. Let me finish. Okay. The greatest moment in ECU football history. The greatest moment. Yes. Ever. Yes. Ever. Yes. <laughs> Ever. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that we got that out of the way. <laughs> the 1992 Peach Bowl played January 1st, 1992. ECU over NC State. Pirates were down by 17. They had to come f- back from 17 points with about, I think they had s- like the seven minutes to go in the game. You've heard of it? I You've heard about this? Yeah. Luke okay. Fisher right. scored the winning touchdown from a pass from Jeff Blake. Ron Franklin, the legendary Ron Franklin, rest in peace, was on the call with Mike Goddard. Oh, he's an announcer? Yeah. Okay. He okay. had just I passed guess. away this week. Probably oh, called okay. Tony yeah, he, oh, he, oh, he, he announced that game. Yes, he oh, announced okay. the game cool. with Mike Godfrey. And guy has a great voice. Dr. Man. Jerry Punch on the sidelines. Oh, yeah. Dr. Jerry Punch. Dr. Punch. This was the call. So in memory of Ron Franklin and the greatest moment in ECU football history, Courtesy of our friends at ESPN. Take it away. 20, left in the ball game. Pass is caught. Fisher will score. Ron Frankie Valley is starting to hum a little bit there, wherever he's starting to hum, I believe, right now. Pumped a little life back in uh, in him. I think you're right. <laughs> Good heavens, what a comeback. 132 left in the game, and East Carolina trying to make it a three-point lead. He's got it. North Carolina State, just a moment ago, led by 17 points. I believe has been their theme all year. There is the crowd, the dude. Call. Yeah, the crowd. The goosebumps. The and crowd just went on and on for like a minute. We said it yesterday on the show that Ron Franklin, the the, the veteran play-by-play voice, let the crowd do the talking in that yes. moment. Yes, and pass you know, is God- caught. Fisher will score, and yes. then it was just. And you didn't hear Mike Godfrey nuts. step over him or anything? Yeah. Well, that, that's that is the classic how you do broadcasting, yeah. folks. Kids Keep today listening, this is how it's done. And I still have, I got to find my Peach Bowl turf. 
I have about a yard of the end zone of purple and gold mm-hmm. peach ball, ball turf. I should bring in here for show and tell one nah, day. You should. How much? I bet you the guy at Tailgate Classics, my buddies over there, Cam Cameron, yeah. would probably pay me a fortune for that turf. How much do you think you get for it? <laughs> well, a let's lot. Try, let's try it out. How much you think Why don't you, you go for? see? How much? Uh, because I don't want to sell it. It's, well, well, you can but, ask him. What if they gave you What if they gave you a million dollars? Would you sell it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I, no, I want you to ask how much would you pay for this well i want to find it first so he can evaluate it how much did you <laughs> bet that he would pay a fortune by the way i just I, feel like no he likes ecu collectibles grass very different how many people have peach bowl grass for sale not a lot exactly raise like, your hand <laughs> <laughs> i'm the only one in the studio raising their that's hand. three times today troy <laughs> yes tony you want some grass no i don't know <laughs> I also have grass from the Orange Bowl when we beat uh, hey, Miami. Tony, Tony, I got some grass, I'll say. <laughs> in uh, 1996. <laughs> and I've got grass from Ficklin Stadium when it was just back when we beat, uh, you, that was the what, Pittsburgh what, game. What are you a grass collector or something? It was hey, turf. You got a green we, thumb, Tony. <laughs> I collected field field back then. Like it, would, it was part of my collection. What would be cool was somehow if you could repurpose it like in your backyard as like... Well, uh, my dream was always to get it like in a plexiglass container and like, it could be your plexiglass. <laughs> oh, I like that. Thank you. With a label of when the game was, the date, and I call it actually like literally a piece of history, and it would be the turf of of, of these great games. So that's what you dream about. So, <laughs> yeah, I've just never put it together yet. I, I, I still got, have. I got a t- question: Is the is the grass still green? Uh, well, the peach bowl grass I got the painted. It was purple gold. Right so out of is the it zone. purple? It's half and half. I, I pulled it up out of the end zone where the letters were. Yeah, yeah. So half of it's purple, half of it's gold. I got it. I would like to try and I've got it in my storage unit, so I got to uncover it and I want to see what it looks like now. Do you have like a mini lawnmower that you use <laughs> to like cut the grass every so often? When, when, when's the last time you've seen it? <laughs> I've probably laid eyes on it. I would say it's probably been about. Ah, it's possible it's been about four years ago. It might so be it's dead. In a storage well, unit? It's, a, well, it's, it's not definitely. growing grass. <laughs> of course it's dead, Tony, but it's painted. It might be eight <laughs> feet tall now. Yeah. <laughs> but it, oh, I have it in a big cardboard box wrapped in like tinfoil oh, to protect it. Uh, Redbeard said, I hope they ban Troy D from that store if he walks in with a bag of dead grass. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to share stuff with you guys anymore. If this is if this is the attitude and behavior I'm going to get, it's from fine. Y'all. That's good. But to say that that guy would pay a fortune for your grass is a little. All right, I should say this: it's worth a fortune. Who to wants you, to buy it? To you, maybe not so much to other yes, people. I don't know. It's priceless to me. Now maybe uh, now if I could only find it in my storage unit. <laughs> I tell you, I ought to sell it to uh, Luke Fisher. Say, hey, Luke, oh, I got I know. a piece of history right here. You're right. It can be yours for $2.4 yeah. million. Like a lot of people have the goalposts. Like, I've got a piece of the goalpost. They cut it up and they I sold it. I think you should give it to Luke Fisher, man. Uh, like, just like for a gift or something. Because of because of him is the reason you got the grass. Well, it's the whole t- It's not just him. He's one player on a great team. Yeah, but he caught the ball. Him. Well, if Jeff if he Blake throw if it. If he would have dropped the ball, then, you know, I mean, you, know you, should, I, you should give him the grass. Give him the weed, man. <laughs> Hand it over. <laughs> hey, you got the grass. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure. Luke you got that good it. grass. <laughs> Wait, why are you giving this to me? <laughs> what if, the hell am I going to do with it? I tell you what, you might get in trouble if you give that to somebody. Yeah, it's, it's or if you mailed it and the police intercepted it. And they're like, what is it? This is a new strain we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Is this that purple haze stuff? <laughs> It's even better. It's 30 years old. Yeah. Age. It's, yeah. Now it really could be valuable. Oh, man. Have you ever tried to smoke a Troy <laughs> No, I have not. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. You just hallucinate I'm, you being at the Peach Bowl again? <laughs> it puts you right I've back got, at full I've got to put this in here and show it to you guys. You smoke that, you'd be like, but it's like, to me, <laughs> it's like the Holy Grail of football turf. Oh, like, uh, it, for me to let you touch it would be a big deal. Like this is like you don't even know where it is. I don't want to touch your dead grass. <laughs> You're not even talking. You don't even know like, where it is. I can find. I bet it. it's gonna take about an hour and a half to find the grass. <laughs> I can go outside right now. And say, hey Troy, I found it. <laughs> and paint it purple and gold. Yeah, God, this is your grass. Uh, you can never duplicate it. <laughs> oh dear, that's funny stuff. Uh, Shirley, <laughs> hey, can we hear another Ron Franklin call? Yes, this is one of the greatest Absolutely. crowd pops in Daddy Ficklin history, and it was not a sold-out stadium for that Conference USA Championship game a day. against Houston. A bad weather day, not a full stadium, but the crowd pop 
on the game-winning interception by Van Eskridge is amazing, and Ron Franklin was on the call. Crowd coming to life, trying to help out the home folks here. Pirates trying to be the first team in this conference to win back-to-back Conference USA titles. And right now, Houston, down six, has got 50 seconds left in the ball game. Looking, going to go long to the end zone, and the ball is bounced and intercepted. Eskridge. Once again. It's like a squeal at the beginning. He, lets, crowd pop he lets the crowd do the talking. Yeah, and that's, that is incredible how loud that crowd was. Oh, uh, the squeal at the, the beginning, uh, the size. I mean, it was a good crowd, but it yeah. was not. It a was sold not sold out. Packed house. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, but man, at that end, <clears throat> great moment. Yeah, raise your hand if you were there. I could actually <laughs> raise my hand on this one. I was uh, once again in my parents' living room for that one, actually, because I went there after the pregame show. We had a little watch party deal. Troy D. Um, let's see if Tony knows uh, Skip Holtz a new destination. Skip Holtz has a new job. Yes, this, this was surprising to me. He, huh? Yes, I fell. Oh wow! How did you know this? I, I watch sports. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know who our starting quarterback was last year, Tony. That shocked me. <laughs> Who's the starting quarterback? <laughs> that shocked me that you wow. knew that. All right, who's going to be the Panthers, Ooh. Carolina Panthers' new offensive coordinator? It won't be that guy that was here. <laughs> I don't know. Lead he candidate. Got, he got his second interview, huh? Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, someone gave him the jicks over there at Studio B. Oh, where he said he will not be the coordinator. Chandler, he will not be. I'm going to say this again. I think he got the second interview because when the first interview was on Zoom, I think the connection was bad, and he kept going out. So they said, hey, how about you just come to Charlotte and get another interview? I think the deal is, say what you want about the guy. The guy can interview. Oh, the first interview incredible. Oh, he's Zoom a salesman. Yeah. He is one of the greatest all-time interview guys. He's all, He's got to be on your all-interview team. Oh, oh definitely. yeah. He's definitely, definitely. a, yeah. And now, I don't know about him as a offensive coordinator, but as an interviewer, amazing. I mean, look, he had us every week thinking that we had a great practice. We were like, well... Well, damn, we had a great practice. We're going to win this week. Now, there, now there's there's a there's a big difference than being a head coach than being an offensive coordinator. Right. I mean, yeah, the, right. the guy could be a great offensive yeah. coordinator. I, what, how, was he a great for, offensive coordinator we, at Maryland? We know for nah. a certain that he was not a good, good head coach. Correct. He right. was fired two years after being the offensive right. coordinator at Maryland. Right, that's what I'm Maryland. saying. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if that – if I was a Panther fan, I'd be very concerned. I heard Tony – I actually read Tony <laughs> yeah, Dunn's article, and I thought he – you know – I thought he made some great points in it. And it was a, basically a flair to like the Panther Nation going, hey, before you make a big mistake, you better look at this background. Hmm. I mean, this could be and the... And it's just always an ECU. It was the, all the other stuff. But this could be the last straw to the Matt Rule era in Carolina. But we'll see. But here's the problem. If he's kind of on his last leg, a lot of good guys don't want to go there. Exactly. You're going to so be... You're he's gonna... limited in the pool. You're going to be on the high road without a net below right. you because the head coach is going to get fired and you're going to be looking for a new Correct. job again next year. Right. So and, and, it's, and it's just like with uh, players uh, finding the right system. It's just like with an offensive coordinator finding the right system. If you don't have the players, I mean, and, and your offense is not doing anything, I mean, I don't care how good an offensive coordinator you are, you don't have the players to run your offense. I mean, that you don't have nothing. Well, Adam Gase is a great example of that, who was Peyton Manning's uh, coach in Denver. and He was also the Bears' o- offense coordinator. And Peyton Manning ran his pretty much whole offense himself, right? Mm-hmm. So then he goes to the Jets and is the worst head coach <laughs> in the league. So if you got the right pieces around you, it makes you look a lot smarter, obviously. Absolutely. By the way, Skip Holtz, Tony, the head coach of the Birmingham Stallions mm-hmm. and the what, USFL. Does that get started this year? I believe so, spring, yeah. That's a spring league again? Yeah. What do you think about Are, are you going to watch the USFL games? Probably not. I... I, I I just don't know if I can get into I'm, it. It's not going to be like I think I'm a little burned out on these, TV. on these spring leagues. I am interested to see if any pirates are there because we got guys going pro. We got seniors leaving. You know, we had DJ Ford on and uh, Warren Sabo on recently. Yeah, not all of them are going to the NFL. Do they wind up in one of these? Leagues? I mean, I th- look. I think it's a good landing spot for Skip. I, I think that's a good gig for him. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, that's not a bad job. I don't think, especially the first, you know, being new. No doubt. So congratulations I think, I, think I, I hope the the league does last because it's it's good for the there's a lot of guys that are not going to make it in the league where they can go to the USFL sharpen up their tools and, and, and you know get another Is, who owns the USFL do not know and then how many teams are there in the USFL 
And I'll what's what's the closest one to here? I have no idea. That's a lot no of, further that's questions. A, that's a lot of questions, though, Joy. All right, the defense rest. So I think I think Trump owns it. <laughs> he did uh, a long time ago, right? <laughs> no, I mean, is the NFL back? I think there's the eight. No, the NFL has nothing to do with okay. the USFL. Yeah. Uh, I do know that the USFL is owned by Fox Sports. Ah, uh, right? okay. so I guess the games are going to be on. They have Fox. their TV home. All right. Uh, the Rock was doing an interview with the Mannings the other night, and they were talking a little XFL. Which is that next year, Shirley? When is that? Okay. But, uh, and The Rock does, is one of the owners of that league. Does it say what the teams are? Uh, let's I'd see. I'd just be curious. Like, I'm, how many? So it looks like there's eight Birmingham, Houston, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, Michigan, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. Now, would you like any of these names, the nicknames for the Washington football team? You can choose from Stallions, Gamblers, Breakers, Bandits, Panthers, Generals, Stars, Maulers, Washington, Gamblers. I kind of like the Gamblers. I do not like the Washington Generals because that is the team that gets beat by the yeah. Trotters all the time. <laughs> that would be bad. That would not be good. How about Michigan Panthers? That's a little weird. Panthers is such a boring I name. know. How, we, Pittsburgh Maulers. And, That's yeah. unique. Never heard of a Mauler on a football team. We got to take a break. Sounds break. like a uh, roller derby club. Yeah, you remember they used to come on Saturday nights on TV? I did. The Fabulous I, Thunderbirds. Yes. Oh, no, wow. there was called something else. Oh, no, I used to, I, it also made you're me You're talking about the, you said roller derby, yeah. did you yeah. not? But, yes. But I also remember on Saturday morning watching Glow. Well, remember the, that? Yes, the Glorious Go- Ladies of Wrestling. Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, I thought it was. My grandfather watched it every Saturday. That was a great show. You Glow? watched that? You watched that? I loved Glow as a kid. Lady wrestling? Oh, raise yeah. your hand if you watched it. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> it was, hey, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Weren't they, that was a good show, wasn't it? Big dog. They had some honeys on that show, I'll tell you that. Coming up on the next uh, Pirate Radio <laughs> Wrestling Podcast, they'll recap it. Uh, Mitchell, Winston Salem. We got a couple minutes, Mitchell. What's up? Let me give you two quick uh, Peach Bowl stories. Number one, I, I knew three guys that were in medical device sales. I was in the other side of medical sales, and we all went to East Carolina. I went with my family to the game. They all three rode together. They left when State scored their final touchdown. Then I think we had a turnover, and it was like eight minutes to go. They left to walk back to their car. We were down by 17. They got in the car. They turned on, they, and one of the guys says, well, Turn on the radio and see how bad we got beat. They turn. They finally found a station that had it on, and it it started with the kick is up. It's no good. East Carolina wins, and they were just like, "What the hell just happened?" <laughs> they had missed the whole. Oh man, how disappointing! <laughs> Never give up on those ninety-one Pirates. And how about this? Here's a yep. fast fact. My dad, he did not sit with me. I was with my best friend, Mark Helms, and we were in the student section. Uh, but my dad ended up going to the Peach Bowl. Lee D. You guys might remember him. He's been on the show before. Who? Lee D. <laughs> not father. <laughs> went to the Peach Bowl for some reason. I don't know why he went, but he got like pirate fever and went. Sat in a separate section. I out. had to make sure Troy didn't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I didn't even see him the whole time. I don't even know what the hell he was doing down there, but he did go to the game. And he guess what he did? <laughs> Left early and missed the comeback. Wow. Still give him grief about it to this day. All right, what's the story? I didn't want to get stuck in traffic. <laughs> story number two. Well, if, if, if you remember when they announced where we were going, State at first was going to decline. Then they then they were forced into it by, by the bowl committee and by ESPN. And I was playing uh, church league basketball with one of the guys that were in the ticket department at East Carolina and I said so what do you think we're going to do with 20,000 tickets? He said I don't know man I'm so nervous 20,000 seats is a lot of seats if you remember those tickets were gone in two and a half days two and a half days people were begging to get a seat it, it, absolutely in fact I was a student then and we had this is the first time and only time I've ever done this we camped out for tickets to get the student tickets in front of Minji's Coliseum where the ticket office was. There was no Murphy Center back then. And uh, I remember once again my buddy Mark bought a tent and we literally spent the night so we could be guaranteed because they only had a certain amount of student tickets. And um, it turned into obviously a giant party that whole night. It was a lot of fun. There wasn't as much sleeping as you would think. But we were there the entire evening. Never have camped out for tickets before or since. And when I got the tickets clip, as a student, they were so valuable, as Mitchell knows, and they were, there were more people that wanted them than could go. I went and got a safety deposit box at a local bank 
and put them in a safety <laughs> deposit box. Are you for serious? Sa- I am dead serious yeah. for safekeeping because I did not want anything to happen to my Peach Bowl tickets. Yeah. I don't so that's, that. I, I rented a or safety. Or just put them in your wallet. I, man. Oh, I ain't a lot of that. <laughs> Lose a wallet, you lose you get wallet. messed up. That's how valuable these things were. I went and rented a safety deposit box wow. just for the tickets. True story. Mitchell, thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, man, appreciate it. All right, there is Mitchell, Mitchell in Winston Salem. We have to take a break. How many people can say they rented a safety deposit? Oh box my God! Raise, raise your hand if you early. Take raise us to break. <laughs> We got more to go on Pirate Radio Live. More Troy D stories when we return after this. There's nothing more important than protecting your family. Fire ants can cause painful allergic reactions and even death. Protect your loved ones at home where you should feel the safest. Visit PestTechAgreenville.com to learn of our once-a-year treatment to guarantee you stay fire ant free. Tested and proven effective by your Eastern North Carolina exterminating professionals at Pest Tech of Greenville. Mention the crying baby for an extra 10% off. Grow Rug 26 is coming to Greenville March 25th through the 27th. This is DJ Fossil from F3 ENC inviting all men to sign up now for this leadership training event. The Grow Rug training events are designed to help men become high impact men by reinforcing the F3 mission of invigoration of male community leadership. To register or to learn more, please visit F3ENC.com. That's F3ENC.com. Remember, you don't have to be great to get started, but you've got to get started if you want to be great. Be sure to check out David Price Construction for all of your commercial or custom residential renovation and building needs. Run by ECU alumni, David Price Construction specializes in commercial projects, maintenance on facilities, and large-scale residential renovations and additions. Proud to be voted the Remodeler of the Year by the Home Builders Association of Raleigh Wake County in 2018 and Best Business Commercial Remodel Project winner for 2020. David Price Construction, the proud ECU Home Services partner. Hey, this is John Grillo, the Bagel Man. You know I love bagels. I don't settle for frozen bagels. That's why we make our bagels right here in Greenville from scratch every day. If you're coming into Bagel Man, you'll notice that there's some renovation going on. Our menu is bigger and better than ever. Our sandwiches, heroes, subs, salads, wraps, bagel dogs, fresh baked pastries, and our new coffee bar. Soon we're going to be opening for dinner. Don't forget Bagel Man for all your catering needs on Fire Tower Road in Greenville. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Avoid the long check-in lines and congestion at the big airports and fly local at PGV. Fast, convenient, and close to home, PGV has more American Airlines flights. Book today at aa.com. PGV, where the pirates fly. University PC Care has been the Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. Unfortunately, many organizations today simply react to IT issues after the damage is done. This is known as the break-fix cycle in the tech service industry. University PC Care's business services division has a better way, a proactive solution called BizCare. What's at your office? Call William at University PC Care today to schedule your free BizCare consultation or learn more at University PC Care. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252 251-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. Hey Pirate Nation, this is Tom with Team Coop Strong. We want to invite you to the Coop Strong race on March 19th. This unique race has a four mile course, a ruck division, and an awesome after party. Proceeds support the local nonprofit Coop Strong, which provides financial support for those fighting ALS, scholarships in memory of Dr. Nelson Cooper, and funding for ALS research. You can sign up at runtheeast.com and follow Coop Strong on Facebook for all of the details. As always, we appreciate your support and go Pirates! This is Marcus Crandall, former ECU Pirate and Grey Cup champion. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation.
You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Brown and Wood is your home of the best selection of GMC, Cadillac, Buick, and Mazda in eastern North Carolina for over 80 years. Shop their entire inventory online at brownandwoodauto.com or visit them on Greenville Boulevard. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Brock. All righty, back with you here on Pirate Radio Live on a Thursday. Shirley Rhodes and I have a best of snow day edition coming up on Friday. So we'll hear a lot of great interviews that we've done so far this calendar year. Kids are fired up. They get a day off of Friday. Pitt County schools, most of the area schools are out. ECU is out. So uh, a three-day holiday weekend for everybody, thanks to Mother Nature. Yep. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, sometimes they do this, and the forecast does not go as planned. You know, I've seen it start at eight inches, then I've seen it come down anywhere like three inches, then it's like a rain event, now it's an ice event, then it could be a snow event. This thing's kind of been all across the board, fellas. Yeah. We don't, we don't know until it happens. You want to talk about a good bet, place your wager on the weather. That'd be tougher than betting sports. Tony, how much money you got on over two and a half inches of snow this week? Uh, I say less. All right, he's going under. I'll take the over. Oh, Troy D, I'll under. take the over. Um, yeah, that'd be a good side business, Troy D, if we could take weather bets <laughs> yeah. here at Pirate Radio. I mean, it's what's different between that and sports? Yeah. Or like your... your and actually, you can't rig the weather. You can actually rig a sports game. Very true. Very the weather true. is probably the... You know, at least it is... You're not going to affect it. It's going to happen or it's not going to happen. Yeah. But you can't influence it. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get with my bookie and uh, I'm going to place my bets. Put them in. Uh, Troy D., real quick, Bears next head coaching odds while we're talking about odds. Ooh, they have. I will say this about the Bears. They have interviewed a lot of people and they've been very transparent about it. And a lot of times these organizations do it. They kind of keep – you have to hear it from third parties or who they're interviewing. To the Bears' credit, every day they are putting out – this is who we interviewed today. This is who we... They are actually controlling a lot of the messaging themselves, and it's coming directly from the Bears' social media accounts and website. These are the GMs we've interviewed. These are the coaches we interviewed. And every day, it's another one or two guys that are putting out there. All right. You the, know how these searches go. A lot of times, they don't tell you who they're talking to. This is a new trend. It's very strange. It's gone this route. But I like it, though. Yeah, don't it's, you? It's open. I think colleges yeah. should do this, too. Yeah. Uh, the lead. This is uh, playillinois.com. dot com. So I guess that's like a what a gambling lottery <laughs> website. Yeah. yeah. Um, the favorite is Brian Dayball. He's with the Bills, I believe. And I will say this: he looks like a Bears coach. He does. <laughs> he's he's big. See he's Tony? bald. Kind of a he's big beard. Beard. <laughs> big dude with a bald head and a beard. Kind of looks like he could have been one of the monsters of the Midway. Yeah. So he yeah. would fit in from that. Department. Yeah, they keep pumping him up uh, from the Bills. Was now, he the defensive coordinator? He's an offensive guy. Offensive guy, okay. Now, if they go the defensive route, Brian Flores is, has the second best odds. He's from Miami. Coach from Miami. Which the, they're really high on him. There was a pr- They did a joint practice last year with the Dolphins, like a scrimmage, and they were, they were really impressed by him last year from what I read. Uh, Leslie Frazier. Former Bear. Oh, okay. Played on the eighty five team. I know him as a he was a coach with who? The was he with the Vikings? Uh but he's been around the league. He's currently for a long with time. the Bills, right? Jim Harbaugh. Uh my personal favorite. Yeah. Try to what, get Jim him. Harbaugh from Michigan? Yeah. yeah. Former Bear also. If Great he legacy. To go back but but to I have NFL. not heard him even being in the interview process right now. Yeah. Uh Doug Peterson's name is out there. Who, I don't like it. Double I, doink game. Bad vibes. <laughs> Ah, he was on the... He was the coach of the Eagles. The winning side of the yes. double doink. Bad vibes. <laughs> <laughs> he could be the answer. He's not the answer. How about this one, Tony? And I'm curious what happens with this guy. No. Josh McDaniels. No, thank you. Remember, he left New England, went to Denver. Denver failed. Failed, and now has been back in New England. Yeah. Is he, like, waiting for Belichick to die? Yes. <laughs> He's the coach in waiting, from what I hear. Right I, I, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. I, I really Keep do. him there. We don't need him. Ooh, okay. All right, next. Oh, wow. No. There's a lot of names. Jokes. Keep it going. Let's go. <laughs> Eric Bienemy. <sighs> you never know, Troy. Why not? I'm just you know, going my gut feeling. Huh? You, never know, you never know who's going to come in there and turn this thing. 
Now this guy, it's this guy, they're real. And go ahead. I've never heard of this. guy. I have never heard of this guy until this search, and all of a sudden now he's the damn leading candidate. I, I don't like his name. I don't Tony. like his name either, except for the fuss at the end. Matt Eberfluss. <laughs> My God, he does not. Fuss at the end is okay. I hate to discriminate. What was, he, what was he last he, year? He is with the Colts. Even he I am like uh, Coach Eberfluss. Hey, he what? might bring Scotty Moe with him. From the Colts. I just don't like it. This, this reeks of nepotism from Bill Polian to me. Wow, uh, like the old gonna, Colt guy. Yes. I have a bad vibe about this one. I hate to discriminate. He does not have a coach's name. No. Eberfluss. Gotta skip him. Tony, can you there's imagine? Gonna be like a, there's going to be a nickname During the season when the Bears are 0 4 and we're talking about Eberfluss with Troy D. <laughs> coach <laughs> Fluss. Hey, Coach Fluss. I hey, yo, Coach Fluss. I'm with you, Clip. <laughs> I right. didn't eliminate him because of his name. <laughs> Nathaniel Hackett. Don't even never even heard of him. I heard of him. Oh, Not familiar. Nathaniel right Hackett off, off is Packers offensive coordinator. Yeah, bad o- vibe. Older guy. Yeah. Uh let's see who else we got. Byron Leftwich. Yeah. Now he's with the Bucks. Yeah. Off, he's a, he's a well, quarterback look, coach, right? Uh, offensive he's offensive coordinator. coordinator. Offensive coordinator. Christ, I could be the offense coordinator of the Bucks and do mm. good with Tom Brady as my quarterback. I hear you. Mm. Come on now. When you hear Byron Leftwich, what do you think? No, I, he pisses me off because <laughs> I think of the GMAC I bowl. Know. You and could I never accept that. Me. Yeah. No. No, a Byron. Brian. I can't. I, can't Brian. I want to call him Brian. How about Kellen Moore? <sighs> Cowboys offensive coordinator. I'd take him over Leftwich. Former Boise State quarterback. He looks like he's 14 years old. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of got the mouth breather look, too. He's He's got his mouth open most of the yeah, time. Yeah, not a huge Catching fan. flies. Matt Campbell, Iowa State. And Ryan uh, Day, Ohio State, round out Long Island, Don't though. go oh. the college route. Yeah. Don't go the college route. Who did I ask if you – oh, I, said, I asked Chandler if uh, – would he take Nick Saban? And he said no. No. No, and Saban's already failed. I know. Exactly. Yeah. He was 15-17 with the I think, Dolphins. I think he should try to get Skip Bulls out of the USFL to come over there. <laughs> well, look, Skip right. does good in the USFL. That could be a springboard into the NFL <laughs> for Skip. I do. I still think Jim Harbaugh would be awesome fit. I was going to say, I'd Troy, him all you day. just crapped on the whole list. Well, why, why would <laughs> No, no, no. I said, why, why the the guy from Harbaugh Miami. Michigan now, they just, they just had a, a great season. Jim right. Harbaugh's right. been your guy from the, he from the get-go. The, the Miami coach is intriguing. You like Flores? Too, as a backup if they can't get Harbaugh. Yeah. But they're saying Harbaugh might be more interested in Vegas. Wow. Huh. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Of course he is. It's Vegas. I don't know if I can fault him. I mean, He's I'd, making a ton of money in Michigan. I though. know, but he can make a ton of money in the NFL and not have to recruit. And he is one of the few. A little bit riskier in the NFL than in college. One of the few that actually made the jump and succeeded. He did. Took a team to the Super Bowl. Yep. I was thinking Vegas' interim head coach would get the gig. He has done a nice job, I think, in a tough situation. But I've seen a report that he will not. Probably not. But but you got to give the guy credit. He's held the team together, got him in the playoffs. He's a player's coach. They like him. Yeah. Chad uh, chimes in on Twitter. He's right. He said, did McDaniels accept the Colts job and then a couple days later change his mind? He did spurn them. Yeah. As, and that's when they went out and got Frank Wright. Was that that coaching search? I think it yes, was. Yes, it's got to be. I think so. Yeah. Frank Wright probably was wrong. <laughs> I, that was good. I'll give it to you. That was <laughs> good. You. I'll be Frank. I'll give it to you. <laughs> let's, let's be Frank. Way to layer that one. That yeah. was good. Uh, Tony. Tony's got a uh, bold prediction here. First Guarantee? game. For, well, oh, I don't know. He's got a prediction. Let's we'll see. Think, well, Let's on. see. He did a bunch of guarantees. He did like three I, guarantees I, I, last I week and half of them were no busted. Guarantees. I don't remember. Was there something about the Patriots? I have no idea what you're talking nah, about. Nah, he didn't guarantee the Patriots because nah, he didn't I, think yeah, they would I win. Go, oh, he did a so prediction, not a yeah. guarantee. Yeah. I, no, no guarantee on the Patriots. Okay. None at all. I knew. The Patriots were in trouble last week when I said, Tony, I'm thinking of taking the Patriots. He said, well, no, I do that. <laughs> yeah. Captain <laughs> Patriot tells you to back off. Yeah, you back know off. something's yeah. going on. <laughs> yeah. Good All call. Right. Did you back off? I did. Yeah. Uh, took the bills. Uh, Tony, we got the games coming up this weekend. First game of the divisional round, 430, Bengals at Titans. And, of course, the number one seed Titans are going to roll in that one, right? I like the upset. Tony likes the, the Bengals. The Bengals going in there in Tennessee and upsetting them. I like guys. the upset, too. I really, I'm going I against really the grain. Do. I'm with Tony on this. The Titans are and the most disrespected number one seed uh, in NFL your history. Your favorite ECU athlete of all time was the Bengal. I know. We have his jersey in the Hall of Fame here at Pirate Radio. Tony's second favorite was the Titan, Chris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're split there, buddy. 
Uh, you like Burrow, Chase? I do. All them? I like I like their offense. If they can stop the run, running attack uh, that Tennessee have, they got a I lot mean, of momentum. I have no. Um, I I can't even think of the quarterback name. Who's the quarterback Who? from Tennessee? Uh, Ryan Tannehill. I, I don't I don't trust him at all. Yeah, I see that. I really don't. All right, Forty ers Packers. Aaron Rodgers has lost in these moments in the playoffs a lot in the past, but they are the number one seed. They're home for the Forty ers Tony. Hard gonna. It's hard to beat uh, Aaron Rodgers in, in uh, Green Bay. So They're not gonna lose at home. Green Bay. Uh, Tony on that again. Sunday Rams at Bucks. It's it. It's t- it's gonna happen. The NFL wants it to happen. They will make it happen. Bucks, I mean, what do you mean Packers, gonna happen? NFC Championship game. The script has already been written. It's gonna happen. I I've been on the Rams all year, but and I'm taking them in this game. But if you tell me it's Stafford versus Brady, I feel like an absolute moron for picking the Rams. Stafford versus Brady. Can Stafford win the biggest game of his career on Sunday? I don't know. The the question is, can their defense get to Brady? If they can get to Brady, that's the only way they're going to beat him. They Did you see the, uh, the other – Von Miller looks like he's young again yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. They're they're dangerous. Dangerous. They got a great defense, man. Yeah. If they can just get to Brady, that's the only question. I went against Brady last year, Troy D. It did not work out not for me. against him. I right know now. you're not right mm-hmm. now anyway. So y'all both on the and Buccaneers, yeah, definitely, close definitely, to being pirates. A, We're pirates around I'm, here. I'm a Brady fan. Kind of like a so distant going, cousin. Okay. Yeah. So going with Tom. Yeah. Uh, and then I wish this was the AFC Championship. What a game coming up Sunday night! Bills at Chiefs. That Mahomes, should, that Allen, be the AFC Championship. Yeah, revenge from the AFC Championship game last year. You think Buffalo gonna gonna get their revenge? I'm going with the home team. I went with Chiefs. I could see it either way. Chiefs are got? just hot right now. Who you got? Kansas City. A lot of that's gonna be a that's gonna be a great game to watch. Offensively, you uh, see you're gonna see a lot of scoring. How about this line, Tony? The Chiefs are like a one two point favorite. Yeah, like that's telling yeah. you that the Bills are the real. How deal. much of the oh, Bills yeah. Mafia travels? And well, well, because I watched the Dallas game and I was blown away. I swear, half the stadium was forty nine. Water red there. It was unbelievable how well they traveled and bought up that stadium. There'll be some Bills fans there. The problem is the Chiefs Arrowhead's one of the best home fields. Absolutely. Like they love. Like yeah. they're so they may not sell their the tickets. tickets. It tells yeah. you a lot about the Cowboy fan base. Yeah, that that many fans would sell their tickets. Why would you want to go to a game where you can be blinded by the light? <laughs> Good call. How about uh, the standing room only? Did you see the standing room st- stampede oh my God. before that? People are such idiots. I'd hate to have those seats. You got to run to go get a standing room only seat. That doesn't sound fun to me. No, I like would rather a, stay home uh, and watch it on TV. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a reserve seat, why bother? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, but I no, to your point, right? Troy. What's if that? it was like Bills at Titans, which it could be next week, I bet Bills Mafia would storm Nashville. Oh yeah, because I, I just see a lot of red in Kansas City. Whereas I could see the Bills like taking Boy, over. Well, if you're the lows down there, you want to load up on folding tables. Yeah, yeah. And two for whatever. Yeah. Have deals, sales going, and all that. I saw somebody saying when the Bills have their home game last week. It's a bad day to be a table in Buffalo. And like, is it mustard and ketchup a, a factor in their tailgating? Don't they like do a lot of stuff with that? Tony, you should do a guarantee your next one at Patriots Bills involving a table that you got to go through. You got to jump through a table if they That's, lose. I'm too old for that. <laughs> Did you see the guy, the one guy who like went off the top of an RV? Yeah. 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 I mean, it was perfect form. They're crazy. It is insane yeah. what they do. They deserve. You think they've been, you think they've been drinking? You think they've been <laughs> no. drinking? Might be, might be a little more than just drinking, but yes. I found Troy's uh, peach bowl grass. Got into it. <laughs> <laughs> you got any more of that peach bowl bread? <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We'll come back and ready to wrap up today. Oh, Ch- Chad has a uh, a dark horse contender for the new Bears coach. Oh, God. <laughs> Belichick's kid. Yeah. What do you think, Tony? The this guy. Yeah. He's a weird dude. <laughs> oh, oh, are you talking guy. about this yeah. guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's like a professional wrestler. Oh, man. <laughs> the liquor. I would love that. All right, we'll take a break, come back. More to go after this. Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of Pirates and ENC. Open seven days a week from noon until 2 a.m., the Buck features live music every night of the week. 
Tuesday is karaoke with DJ Captain Morgan. Wednesday is acoustic night. Thursday is the DJ dance party. And Friday and Saturday nights, it's live bands. Check out the Bucks Facebook or Instagram page for more information. The Buccaneer Music Hall. We'll see you at the Buck. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Buick GMC Truck. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new 2022 Buick Encore GX. Save up to $1,250 off or 1.9% for 72 months. As always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the convention center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. It's a new year and we have some exciting news at Angel Oak Home Loans. This is Talbot Green and I would like to introduce you to the newest member of our team, Braxton Green. I've known Braxton his entire life because he's my nephew. He is also a recent ECU graduate and has lived in eastern North Carolina his entire life. This is Braxton Green and I'm looking forward to working with you with your next home loan or refinance. Give us a call at Angel Oak Home Loans today at 751-2060. NMLS 1719250 and 685-842. Equal housing lender. This is Dr. Phil Perdue with Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center. My colleagues and I recognize how difficult this time is for everyone in our community. We continue to see patients during the week while taking precautions to keep everyone safe. Our extended care clinic is now open on Saturdays and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. so you can avoid the emergency department for your urgent orthopedic care. For more information, please contact us at 757-2663 or visit our website at ortho. East.com. Pirate fans, get ready for a winning season and team up with Quality Equipment, your local John Deere dealer and proud sponsor of the ECU Pirates. When you do business with us, you'll get things done right. We're proud to offer a large selection of new and used John Deere equipment, a fully stocked parts department, and a highly trained staff who is here to support you throughout the life of your equipment. So get quality done right before every ECU game day and visit qualityequip.com. Hey dads, it's back. Plan to join us for our 6th annual Daddy-Daughter Dance Friday, February 11th at Rock Springs. This event will be a fun night of games, music, photo keepsakes, raffle tickets, and of course, dancing. Best of all, 100% of the proceeds will go to Daughters for Dads, which supports local families affected by cancer. Sponsorship opportunities are also available. Purchase your tickets today by going to eventbrite.com and search for Daughters for Dads. We will see you Friday, February February 11th at Rock Springs. At U.S. Cellular, we can help everyone stay connected for less. And less also means more, as in more choice. Right now, you choose any phone and we make it free. Plus, get unlimited data for $30 a month with four lines. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply to uscellular.com for details. Now that life is returning to normal, we have found a lot of good things that came from the pandemic. One of them is not having to go to the wireless store anymore. The Cellular Warehouse team has been in the business of delivering phones to your home and office for 20 years. People found out about our free delivery service and love the ease of getting a new phone, tablet, or hotspot. Call Toby Williams today at 252-799-7051 so you can start experiencing the joy of never going to a wireless store again. Cellular Warehouse, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent. This is Coach Donnie Kirkpatrick, Office Coordinator for ECU Football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. It was another down day for the stock market. The Dow was down 313 points at 34,715. NASDAQ dipped 186 points at 14,100. 154 and the S&P is also down 50 at 4,482. That's your Wells Fargo Advisors financial report. For a personal look into investing, call Wells Fargo Advisors today at 756-6900 in Greenville. Wells Fargo Advisors LLC, member SIPC. Now let's head back into the show. Here's Cliff. All righty. Wrapping up a Thursday edition of Pirate Radio Live. And yes, Bo, you have been bumped. 
We're going to have Bobo in tomorrow, Troy Dick. Bobo, yeah. Oh, sorry, Bobo. We'll save that for uh, best of maybe, show. Maybe Monday. Who's Bobo? Yeah. Bo Bats. Bo Bats. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to Bo uh, coming up next week on the show. Uh, got some great interviews coming up tomorrow, though, Troy D, including uh, Cliff Godwin, CJ Wilson, Warren Saba, DJ Ford, John Gilbert, Burley, Connor Norby, Brock Anderson, and more. So uh, all that on the way on Friday. We should have done if it snows an inch or less, we work. If it's an two inches or more, we don't work. And in between an inch and two, we take a vote. Too late now. <laughs> No, it's not. If it's an intro list, Troy D can host Pirate Radio Live tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds great. No, I was look. I was on the side of let's err on the side of caution. School's out. It's going to be a snow situation. Still best of. All right, best of yeah. it is. It is. We'll be back Monday. Tony enjoyed it as always. Good yes, to sir. see you, man. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you Monday. Don't get uh, don't get stuck in the snow. It's good advice. Yeah. What are you going to do if it snows? Do you go out in it? Like, do you enjoy it? or? Yeah. See, your, your snow down here, it's not. It's like nothing to me. Yeah. Compared to the snow I used to get up in New York. Talk so. about my snow like that. I'm just saying, you know, you you guys, I mean, you guys don't, I mean, it's like nothing. You're okay with it because you, yeah. you grew up in yeah, it. Yeah. Pretty simple. In Pinyan. Pinyan. And he's a yeah. skier. Yeah, this hey, you just impressed me. <laughs> this is nothing. You're you're used to Colorado snow. Yeah, you're a seasoned, a seasoned veteran. All right, if Shirley. Get, if we get 12 inches, then I'll be worth. Shirley, CJ, Chandler. We'll see you five right, folks Clipper. coming up Monday. Uh, we got a best stuff coming up tomorrow. Troy D, enjoyed it. Sounds good. Talk to you a Monday. Lot of fun. Thanks, guys. All right, for the crew here, I'm Clip Rock. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to Pirate Radio Live, an exclusive presentation of the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farm.